What's up, Paso Lee, Sharklos, Akegog, TMFA Hall, Vic. Yeah, Kayshawn, I forgot to switch it from last stream. <laughs> oh, this is a stream for everyone. What's up, Akegog? Stop, man. Ghost, Ruik, Rouge. Welcome, 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 welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the largest Pokemon Go tournament that has ever been held. 320 competitors have arrived to London, England for a chance at a cash prize of over $5,000 and eternal glory. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Madhouse. Yes, this is the biggest Pokemon Go tournament ever. The European International Championships. And we have the usage chart here for day number one. And it's looking very familiar, which does not surprise a lot of people. Gligar, no Pokemon over 50% shows that there is a little bit of balance here. There is a little bit of balance here. Annihilate at 45.5, Lantern 40.3, Cresselia 39.9. Uh, when they list Gligar, they mean Shadow Gligar. People who are competing seriously don't use non-shadow. So, when they say Gligar, they only mean shadow. Lick its tongue. Yeah. Lantern is up because everyone saw what Wiscarp can do. Exactly. Lick its tongue. Wizcash. Skarmory is right here below my big ol' head. Charge bug. The rise of Mandibuzz. Now on 20% of teams. Mandibuzz consistently making his presence felt these past couple tournaments in the top 12. Vigoroth at 19.4. A definite fall off of Vigoroth, Altaria, and Azumarill. Tell me what walls Frost lasts. Uh, I would just do Skarmory and click Steel Wing. <laughs> so the interesting thing is... This definitely feels like the most balanced meta we've ever had, and I don't think that there's much of an argument that can be made otherwise. Because for a while, if we remember, we had Metacham at like 80% usage for ages. Like, we would have one Mon way ahead of the crowd, or two Mons way ahead of the crowd, and now we have nothing over 50%. So it feels like this is a healthier metagame than we've had in quite a while. It'll be interesting to see as we have our first match of the day, it is Mish versus Ginako, and Mish has some interesting Pokemon on her team. Yeah, Ficked, uh, this did start five hours ago, yes. Running Gudra, Annihilate, Registeel. Registeel has definitely fallen off, but we see it on both teams. Shadow for Alligator, Cresselia, and Shadow Gligar. And for Ginako, Whizcash, Cresselia, Dugong, Shadow Gligar, Annihilate, and Registeel. Right off the bat, Feraligator looks incredibly good for Mish. It looks incredibly good. Like, there isn't, like, as we take a look, okay, so it is the Aqua Tail Power Whip, Night Slash Shadow Ball, Ice Beam on the Gator, and Future Sight on the Cresselia. And for Ginako, I mean, what here hard counters the Feraligator? The answer is nothing. She can safe switch this for alligator every single game. It should be brought every single game because there's there's no counters on his team. He has nothing that beats for alligator on his team. As long as she positions it well, she'll be in a very very good spot. And we have uh, our esteemed judge CCO in the back. Make sure. Okay, we're on 1080. We're good. It's just the lighting they they have at the venue, like they have like smoke and stuff. So that's why it looks a little hazy. Oh, and because it's in England, they have the cool new backgrounds. 
Nah, a Gator does quite well into Dugong. Gligar into the cash did not bring the Gator. That's an extremely surprising decision. But yes, as we do see, these new backgrounds are available in certain countries. England is one of them. So throughout the day, as the weather changes, we are going to see some interesting stuff. Jainako choosing not to scald right away is interesting. Instead, just looking to massively over farm. A scald does not knock out here. But again, I'm very, very surprised at the decision to bench the Gator when it looks incredibly good. The debuff does occur. It'll be charge attack priority. But again, Jinako does not go for it. Yeah, in GBL itself, the rise of Wigglytuff has made it hard to use Gator. At this range, a Mud Bomb would come very close to knocking out. It wouldn't quite, so... Mish is going to call the Mud Bomb and just take Shield Advantage. And can just send in the Annihilate. Making it to the Scald. She shields the Scald. I think she may have been better off no shielding this. We now see a switch into the Gligar. Gonna stay in and go for a Shadow Ball, and you have to wonder if this energy would have been more useful later on. Could have just switched into the Cresselia for free and know that your energy is gonna be very good, but now you switch, you have no fast attack pressure here. Jinako's gonna get a lot of damage onto this Cresselia, and I think Jinako's probably going to be able to take game one. It feels like the energy would have been more efficiently saved because as we look across Jinako's team, Gligar takes that energy better than most things. Like, energy on Annihilate is very strong for Mish here, but I disagree with throwing it there. I think saving it, even though it's the Cresselia in the back, I mean, even though she doesn't know it's the Cresselia, the other mons that it could be are Dugong, Annihilate, Cresselia, and Registeel, in all of which the energy is more useful there. So uh, I definitely disagree with how this ended up playing out. Yo, what's up, Drake? The uh, code, I believe, is given out individually. So what I'd recommend is if you pull up a second tab and just have it on mute and have it on the Twitch stream, that, and as long as you connect your account to your Twitch account, then the drop should automatically pull up for you. Grass Dot or Moonblast, more energy efficient. They're very close in the mirror. I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. I'll actually check that. Yeah, it's 0.7 for Grass Knot, 0.71 for Moonblast. The massive overfarm, knowing that she's unable to farm this down, and this is just a game one win for Jinako. I liked Jinako's play of pivoting, like, of pivoting when he did, because he was trying to check for a gator in the back. The drop gives you a research that gives you a couple Pokemon. It it gives you like the randomized IVs of the Pokemon that LNDS Rarjeff won uh, the Latin American International Championships with. So all things considered, like it's not like an amazing Stardust reward or TMs or anything like that. It is like. It is six meta Pokemon, but it's random IVs and it's at research level. I believe the IV floor would be 10 from research, yes. But he pivoted there because Gligar up one wing attack does very well into Gator. So I really liked that pivot from him. That was a nuanced understanding of how the Feraligator Gligar interaction works. Yo, what's up, Ace Vex? Good to see ya. Oh, we have a game! But it's a Moonblast Crest into the Gudra. Gudra wins the one shield and the two shield, as we see a bait here versus Future Sight Crest, but this is a Moonblast Crest. He's baiting and shielding the bait! Oh no! We do see the Feraligator in the back! Going for the Aqua Tail. And that will be no shielded as Jinako understands that no one charge move is going to be able to deliver a knockout blow. We're going to see a save switch into the Registeel answered with the Annihilate. And Annihilate 
is going to be taking quite a lot of damage from the Zab Cannon, but importantly, a Zab Cannon is not going to be enough to KO here. So Jinako more than happy to let this go, understanding the lock-ons will only do one HP of damage, and going to be able to overfarm quite significantly. The attack drop does come through. Continuing to farm, hoping to put it into Shadow Ball range. This, I don't believe with the debuff, will be Shadow Ball range. Me should be able to hang on here. The Shadow Ball into the Reggie Steel gets the Reggie Steel low. Can Reggie Steel make it to the move? No, it cannot. Falls one lock on short. That is unfortunate for Mish. Mish does still have a very healthy Gudra, and Gudra is very good at absorbing energy. So you just send in the Gudra here, and oh, not letting the Shadow Ball connect. Instead, going for the Aqua Tail. Aqua Tail is going to be no shielded by Jinako, understanding that the energy on this Annihilate is going to be, of course, resisted. Going for the Moonblast now. Moonblast, I imagine Gudra can probably hang on here. I'm not 100% sure, but Gudra has a lot of bulk to it. The Moonblast is going to connect Gudra. It barely hangs on. In comes the Feraligator, but the Grass Nun will grab the shield, and then Registeel will be able to go for the Zap Cannon. So brought the Feraligator game too, but had a very, very rough go of it, leading the Gudra into the Cresselia, went down shields, and Shadow for Alligator can do many things, but it cannot clutch when it has no shields remaining. I mean, Jinako doesn't even have to shield here. Very unfortunate here, but for Jinako, in a matchup that looked very, very tough, looked like he had no good for Alligator answers, Able to get the 2-0 to zero victory, so nicely done here by Jinako. And Zap Cannon, that's massive overkill onto that for Alligator. In comes the Gudra. Yo, what's up, Mark? Hello. Yeah, her name is spelled like Machamp with an X, but she uh, prefers, like, the uh, way that, that she typically pronounces it is on, because uh, she's a streamer as well, it's just Mish. Also, chat, some of North America's best are here at this tournament. So not only is it the best from Europe, the Tauntaun Batuses of the world, the Emmy Weedle, the Galax Caboltons, the Arc, the Arceus Aurelius. Sorry, the Arceus Aurelius. But also North America's best are here as well. We have its Axon in attendance. Rise. Arrow. Dune Bug, some of the best of the best from North America. So this is going to be incredibly good. And South America too. Ooh, who, who showed up from South America? Yeah, it is a massive, massive tournament. Yeah, this is the biggest tournament in Pokemon Go competitive history. And it's stacked. It's absolutely stacked. All right, let's take a look here. Will we get to see the teams shortly? The battlers are on the stage. Let's see these teams, please. And I'm pretty sure Palasha is also there. All right, we have our teams. Azumarill, Ice Beam Player Off. Our first Mandibus sighting of the day, Future Sight, Cresselia, Chargebug, Whiskash, and Shadow Gligar. I have to imagine NAIC will be slightly smaller than this, but who knows? Maybe it'll be bigger. I hope it's bigger. We have Dueling Mandibuzz, a Moonblast Cresselia, so he's better prepared against opposing Mandibuzz, Shadow Gligar, Vigoroth, Charja, and the Shadow Whiskash. I do think that Vigoroth is, and Mandibuzz both are, are going to outperform their, their usage today. Yo, it's a stalemate. I definitely think they're going to be able to outperform their usage. Vigoroth is so consistent into everything not named Annihilate, so you have to build a team where you have basically everything else can be neutral to positive versus Annihilate to allow you to freely play Vigoroth. Well, the VOD will be up after the fact, MEJP. Oh, we have lock-ins. Game one, Shadow Gligar versus the Cresselia. Taking a look in the back, we have dueling Mandibuzz and a Zoomeril and a Gligar. So this is for Mr. McCalvin. If that Azumarill gets loose onto his back line, this could get very uncomfortable. But for Birds of Prey, getting rid of the Cresselia is a big priority because the charge bug was not brought by Mr. McCalvin. Going for the dig. We will see the no shield here by Mr. McCalvin. 
as Dig is going to connect into the Cresselia. Two Digs shouldn't knock out unless it's a very bad Cresselia. And we see, oh, the Dig catch onto the Shadow Gligar. Beautiful catch by Mr. McCalvin. Mr. McCalvin catching it where it's double resisted and he baits out the Azumarill. And this is absolutely what he had to do. Baiting out the Azumarill is huge for Mr. McCalvin. As this potentially frees up the Mandibuzz. So we're going to end up with a Mandibuzz versus Mandibuzz mirror in this endgame. Mr. McCalvin saving energy on that Cresselia. Whereas the Gligar for Birds of Prey is now completely dry. Very nice over farm here by Birds of Prey. And we're going to see a no shield by Mr. McCalvin. More than happy to let this go. What's up, Cito? Yeah, so this happened earlier this morning. So we're going to be able to catch up with live in a couple hours. But this happened earlier this morning. Grass Dot shouldn't quite knock out from this range. Unless it's a poor Azumarill. Azumarill is going to be able to hang on there. It does have a very good IV spread. A lot of XL candies to hang on. And Mr. McCalvin committing the shield. He wants the Psycho Cut farm down. Clock not yet up for Birds of Prey. Would love to be able to switch out and deny the farm down. Unable to do so. Azumarill is going to get Psycho Cut down. And this energy is a problem. This energy is a problem. Oh, that's the plan, Cito. Yes. In comes the Mandibuzz. You do live a Moonblast, but if you take this damage, then Mr. McCalvin's Mandibuzz will do very, very well in the back. Will we see the double shield here? Mr. McCalvin, perfectly timed once again, going for another Moonblast. If she shields, then she should be in a pretty decent spot here. She lets the Moonblast through, immediate switch into the Mandibuzz. That health disparity is going to be nearly impossible for Birds of Prey to overcome. But it's very awkward not knowing what that final Pokemon is, trying to make that shield call. But letting one Moonblast through, saying it's Mandibuzz, I can survive anything. But there's an opposing Mandibuzz in the back, and this is going to be really tough. This is going to be really tough. Oh, that's pain, Tiger. Uh, is Eddie good for Ultra? Yo, what's up, Mimic Dad? Yeah, people have high rank Mandy's now. Thanks to that event. And Cresselia also has no attack stat. Look at a switch into the Gligar. But we can see it over far by Mr. McKelvin. His energy awareness is absolutely on point. My goodness. The Dark Pulse to guarantee the knockout gets shielded. She's going to go for the Aerial Ace of her own. He can still do one. And from this range, after one Snarl, I believe an Aerial Ace should be able to knock out. Oh, does two. Again, just maximizing as much farm as he possibly can. This is a very impressive showing so far from a competitor who I don't know has competed before, Mr. McCalvin. I will have to go on DracoViz and check that out. It's charge attack priority, and Mr. McCalvin is going to win CMP. As we can take a look here, Mr. McCalvin, has he competed before? He has not. This is his first tournament. DracoViz has no information on previous tournaments for him, and he's going to be able to take this game number one win. She over farms, but an Aerial Ace wouldn't knock out Mr. McCalvin, whereas an Aerial Ace will knock out her. Live at the event, honestly, we aren't in front of people. We're in the back with a camera, so it feels very similar to what I'm doing now. Because we are not in front of people. We are like in a back in a like back studio behind the stage. Yo, Beast with the 34 months. I appreciate you, homie. Good morning. Welcome in. Yeah, like, I will typically say charge attack priority or CMP. I'll say CMP just so people know what I'm referring to to try and get people more accustomed to the official terminology. Yo, what's up, Oscar? Yeah, Mr. McGalvin is... Judging by his Drake of his page, he consistently hits very high elo, but he does not typically heat at these tournaments Gligar versus Gligar let's take a peek in the back and oh man switch advantage matters quite a bit here for Mr. McAlvin so this could come down to who wins charge attack priority in the mirror yeah we have a couple big big screens in front of us yes 
We see a catch onto the Mandibuzz. Now, Mr. McAlvin, this gives him the opportunity to bring in Vigoroth. And that's exactly what he's going to do. And this sets up the alignment he needs in the back with the Cresselia into the Azumarill. Going for the Dark Pulse right away. Immediate no shield by Mr. McAlvin. And Mr. McAlvin will be able to overfarm quite significantly here if he wants to. The Dark Pulse will connect. Vigoroth will be able to survive. The Snarls plus one additional Dark Pulse going to go for three and the move again. The mechanics are just perfect from Mr. McAlvin. As he's going to go for the Rock Slide. This does not knock out. Mandibuzz is an extremely bulky bird. But he can go for one and the Body Slam if he wants it. But no. Instead, he's going to let the Mandibuzz make the Dark Pulse. He's going to try and commit to a farm down here. Trusting in the HP on the Vigoroth. Vigoroth deep into the red. But Snarl not going to do a lot of damage. And he gets the counter down. Leaving with fractional HP. And now he gets a guaranteed Rock Slide onto any remaining Pokemon. In comes the Azumarill. The bubble goes through. Rock Slide does incrementally more damage. It is much less efficient, but in this situation, he only gets one move, so the Rock Slide is the right move to go for. Yo, what's up, Christopher? Gligar. Met with the Gligar. And Mr. McAlvin winning charge attack priority, being able to force the shield from Birds of Prey. This is not quite in Moonblast range, so for Mr. McAlvin... He is actually going to let this go. He's just hoping to Psycho Cut it into Moonblast range, basically. Because if you shield, you potentially give an ability for Birds of Prey to get, like, a massive farm. Whereas now, he's just entirely relying on the Cresselia. This is not enough for the dig, but he's going to protect the Cresselia. Understanding that the Azumarill is not going to be able to put up any fight whatsoever here. And now, I mean, this is just completely in the driver's seat for Mr. McAlvin. Birds of Prey, honestly, I don't even really feel like made any mistakes in this particular match. In either of the two matches, but Mr. McAlvin has just been playing completely flawlessly so far. And it's been, it's been very, very impressive to watch. It's been very, very impressive to watch. He is going to shield. And this is already in Grass Knot range, so she can't even go for a catch. Goes for a Moonblast to guarantee it. That's a slight inaccuracy, but it, realistically, it's not going to matter. Because a Grass Knot would knock out from this range. Yo, what's up, JCL? Hope you're doing well, homie. I have not done my sets, no. I woke up, I showered, and I'm here. <laughs> and the Azumarill has taken out of damage that this is actually two Grass Knot plus Psycho Cut range. The battles, we're on our second set of the day. We're on our second set of the day. Because Azumarill, it can survive. And she knows that she needs two moves to knock out here. So going for the... Going for the um, Ice Beam. Mr. McAlvin, this Grass Knot. I believe it's going to survive this. And it'll come down to Psycho Cut versus her ability to get to a move. The Grass Knot connects. Azumarill deep into the red. Can it get to the Ice Beam? No, it cannot. And Mr. McAlvin with the 2-0 to zero victory there. A very impressive showing from a first-time competitor. Frame-perfect mechanics, perfect energy awareness, making a good catch. And I'll be honest, a trainer who I did not know was here, but I say is an early contender for potentially making day number two. That was a masterclass there. That was beautifully played. All right, we have our next battlers on stage. For legendary mons, a lot of it is raiding with um, t the tier three mega active that shares the same typing as what you're raiding is very helpful. Oh, we have a Shadow Dragonite sighting. Shadow Dragonite, Shadow Gligar, Night Slash, Annihilate, Lickitung, Lantern, and Dugong. So this is an interestingly designed team. There's Shadow Dragonite. There's three absurdly bulky Mons. And then Gligar and Annihilate. So he basically has three attackers and, and three very bulky Mons. I really like the composition of this, of this particular Show 6 team. I've run a lot of GBL lines like this. Where it's like, you have one Mon that does infinite damage and two things to catch moves on. Good morning, Austin. Happy Friday. Welcome in, homie. 
For PvP, no. For PvP, I wouldn't max unless it's 50 in attack. And we have a Guzzlord, our first Skarmory sighting of the day. I do think Skarmory is going to have a very impressive showing today. Shadow Gligar, the Guz, the Lantern, and the Lickitung. You're already in Saturday? That's fair, time zones. Um, the official stream drops a code that gives, like, an encounter with six Pokemon. It's the six Pokemon that Rarjeff won LAIC with, but it's random... It's random encounter IVs, so it's like 10, 10, 10 to 15, 15, 15. So unfortunately, it's like, it's a nice drop for like brand new players, but Anatoquins is casting it. Uh, you do not, Tiger, no. Uh, they're giving out uh, Rarjeff's. Ooh, great lead for Kazim. It, Sod is going to save switch into Lantern. Answered with the Guzzlord. Oh, no. Oh, it all goes wrong in a moment for Sod. As Kazim. And by the way, Chet, uh, Kazim was the fifth legend in the world this season. The guy who's over on over here. He was the fifth legend in the world this season. And Sod is a constant leaderboarder as well. But Lantern into Guzzlord is a thoroughly miserable experience for the Lantern. As Kasim, giving the camera a little bit of side eye here. As he's going to be able to absorb the Thunderbolt damage. Fully commit to a farm down. And he's actually letting Sod do extra damage to him. To prevent counters on the Annihilate. Shadow Dragonite has a massive amount of work cut out for it here going to have to bring in the Annihilate and just absorb the energy but this is going to be very difficult for Shadow Dragonite as it basically has to 1v2 but the Gligar has an energy lead he's looking to switch he does get the Dragon Breath Snipe which is good for him but in comes the Lickitung and this this is looking basically unwinnable for Sod at this point as Sod does have the one Dragon Breath head start but as long as Kazim double shields, the Dragonite will get too low and the Annihilate is unable to get that Shadow Gligar off the field. He's going to go for the Hail Mary superpower here. Kazim's thinking about it. Kazim shields the superpower. And yeah, this is very comfortable game here. Yo, what's up, Josh? On the big screen at work. Let's go, dude. Happy Friday. The superpower. Oh, he's just going for Gligar farm. Oh, that's a wicked win con identification by Kazim. As there's just nothing this Annihilate can do. Letting the Dragonite get the KO to just give the Gligar farm. And I'm expecting we'll see just a no shield here by Sod. Sod actually does shield, hoping against hope that his counts are off. But no, they are not. The back-to-back -back aerial ace is there. And a confident game one win there for Kazim. Fifth legend in the world for a reason, Chad. And fun fact, in his legend set, he actually defeated me as one of his five trainers in that 5-0. <laughs> so game one win to Kazim. Sod was really put on the back foot by the fact that the Guzzlord was brought. If the Guzzlord isn't brought, the Lantern save switch is very good into Kazim's team. But the Guzzlord was brought... And it was very, very tough. So Saad took a calculated gamble there, but Kazim brought the guys. Kazim's signature mod is Whimsicott, but it looks like he chose not to bring it in this tournament, instead opting for Guzzlord and Skarmory. And I do really like the Skarmory brain. Got the shiny Kartana? Nice. I haven't done any raids since it rotated. Oh, there's that Skarmory leading into the Lickitung. But this is not, like, Skarmory does do fairly well here, but Lickitung can flip this. Well-timed by Sod, throwing in the middle of the Steel Wing. I believe good rank Lickitungs can win the ones here. So Lickitung is definitely not helpless. There's the Gligar and the Dugong in the back, and that Dugong just has nowhere to run against Kazim's backline. 
But that's the interesting thing about show six, Emrex, is if we take a look at Kazim's team, the Guzzlord is the only hard check to a Lantern save switch. So he just gambled that he didn't bring the Guzzlord. But he did bring it, and then he was just immediately in a really tough spot. Slam will be no shielded. Going for the Brave Bird here. If Sod shields, he gets switched, but switch doesn't help him in this game. Uh, no, JCL. So it's uh from Rarjeff's team, and Rarjeff... Oh, we're going to see a pivot into the Lantern. Lantern can throw first and deny the full sneak there. That's well done. That's well done. Uh, there are quite a few stalemate. Yes, there are quite a few. There's Emmy Weedle competing. There's Cokeshot competing. There's probably a lot more who I'm forgetting. I'm pretty confident they won't. Tevin because they realized that buffing Lantern was a pretty large mistake. The weight of the turn by Kazim. Sod double shielding. Does Sod end up baiting here? It's such a risky bait though. No bait. Full sending. Does Kazim call this? He's thinking about it. He shields and gets the shield call right. Oh, they both wait a turn. They, and they put up the catch animation there. Expected the catch. Sod waits, but Kazim waits too and doesn't throw it. Oh, what a beautiful display of high level skill expression there. Oh my goodness. That was gorgeous gameplay there. Sod understanding Kazim waits the turn, but Kazim waits as well. Sees there's no move being thrown. Can he get this farm down here? It'll be close, and he does! He gets the farm, and the catch out of the lick and tongue. And Kazim is just putting on a clinic in this game. Oh my goodness. Unbelievable gameplay here by Kazim. Wow. Just... <laughs> I think this game is the pogo equivalent of, of putting someone on a poster chat. I'm pretty sure uh, this is the Pogo equivalent. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was... Wow. That was a clinic by Kazim. That was a clinic by Kazim. Not letting Sod catch after Sod waited the turn. Getting that farm down. Understanding he had the move. So I'm just going to switch and catch. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. The uh, music is so the VOD can actually be published after the fact, so it's non-copyright music. Oh, we have an absolute titan, right? <laughs> right, SD, right? Wild, wild. Oh, we have two, actually two titans here. Ash Shelto versus Andres. Andres, I believe, was a world's competitor previously, and Asper Shelto was as well. So this is the battle of, of two world's competitors. Andres was second at the Turin special event. And for Asper Shelto, I'm going to look it up. I believe he's done very well in the past. For Asper Shelto, he was fourth at Warsaw in 2023. So this is the battle of two pretty... Uh, two pretty experienced competitors. Andres has the edge in terms of more tournaments than Ashpachelto, though. For the teams, Andres has Shadow Gligar, Cresselia, Annihilate, Lantern, Dugong, and Lickitung. And for Ashpachelto, Annihilate, du sorry, the, the Annihilate, no Dugong, the Lickitung, and the Lantern are all the same. But where the teams differ is Altaria, a rare Trevenant sighting. And Skarmory. Yo, what's up, Chillis? How you doing, homie? Yeah, so Zionic is, is one of the casters because this is in England and he lives in England. Let's take a look. Night Slash Annihilate makes sense. Moonblast on Cresselia. Pretty standard across the board. And very standard movesets. Night Slash is basically the standard. Yeah, Trev is honestly looking decent. Trev is honestly looking decent. 
Ooh, okay. Lantern into the Annihilate. A very bait-dependent matchup for the Annihilate. Let's take a peek in the back. And, oh, switch matters a lot here for Andres. Andres is going to wait the turn. There's a Skarmory and a Gligar, and that is the most polarizing matchup in this entire meta. I would argue it's even more polarizing. Ooh, waiting the turn, baiting with the Night Dash. I'd argue it's even more polarizing than Skarm into Lantern. Going to be able to make the Surf again, waiting the turn. This does not knock out. Ash for Shelto, the double shield. And the question is, does Ash for Shelto then go for a double bait to try and win Switch? Oh, the Shadow Ball catch onto the Lickitung. What an unbelievable catch by Andres. Oh my goodness. Waits the turn when he waits the turn. Gets the catch. And that is just devastating for Ashpra Shelto. We're going to see Ashpra Shelto bank the energy and send in Skarmory. As Skarmory is very good at invalidating energy from the Lickitung. But what a beautiful catch by Andres there. Taking advantage of Ashpra Shelto's tendency to wait a turn. And punishing him for it with a devastating catch. Skarmory, very good at invalidating energy from the Lickitung. But this is what Andres needs. Andres needs to be able to bait out the Skarmory. This is an ABB style team to free up that Shadow Gligar in the end game. She's going to be able to make it to another body slam. And this will not be able to pick up the knockout, but it will continue to get the Skarmory deep into the red health. Skarmory approaching 100, going to go for the sky attack. Andres very happy to let this go and just try and get a spark down with the lantern. The lantern is in a range where a Brave Bird will actually do some solid damage. Andres waiting the timer means that Ash Shelto's clock will be up. He can save the move if he wants to, but he chooses not to. Instead, he's going for the Brave Bird. Brave Bird will do a lot here. Andres going to no shield. The Brave Bird picks up the KO, and now it's the Shadow Gligar into the Lickitung. And we have to remember, there's energy on that Annihilate. Annihilate banked a ton of energy before switching out. And this could potentially make things difficult. Dig connects into the Lickitung. Lickitung will be able to make it to two body slams. And I think this is going to be a game one win for Ash Shelto. As Andres needs to be able to survive two body slams and the Licks to win this game. But the Skarmory is too healthy. There's no win count remaining for Andres. As the Annihilate has energy and it wins charge attack priority, she commits the shield, but in doing so, this is a game one win for Ash for Shelto. Even though she made the amazing catch, it's still not enough, but that's the level of competition at these tournaments. As he can send in the Annihilate, go for the Shadow Ball, and Shadow Ball is going to take the game one victory. But that's crazy how good of competition we have here. Catching a Shadow Ball on a Lickitung might not even be enough to win you a game at this tournament. This is the most stacked tournament in, I, I would argue the most stacked tournament in Pokemon Go history. And that's counting previous worlds. Yeah, top two in Turin, top eight in Liverpool. Oh, we have lock-ins here. The Lickitung into the Lantern. Good lead for Andres. But Lantern is very good at making this lead annoying. And making it way closer. It's 320, Chillis. It's 320. Just unbelievable numbers. I do want to take a peek at the back lines when I have a moment. It's his own Lickitung and the Altaria. In comes the Lickitung. Answered with the Annihilate. Lickitung does win the ones with a body slam bait. But the zeros and the twos are comfortable wins for the Annihilate. Annihilate is going to start spamming out these Night Slashes, fishing for that 12.5% chance at a boost, but it's not to be. The Power Whip does right around 40% to an Annihilate, so it's not going to be enough to knock out, but it will leave its mark. Andres gets the shield called correctly, and now she gets to fully farm this down. He doesn't make a Power Whip here. She decides to throw to deny a body slam, 
I would have honestly preferred to just see the counter down because in this matchup, my guess is maybe she thought she gave Ash for Shelter too much of an energy head start. But as long as you don't give their Lickitung too much of an energy head start, if you shield the whip, you can farm down. They can't make a second whip. In comes the Altaria. You have to wonder if double Night Slash is going to be used here to guarantee damage. I like this play. I believe she can make an, an, another move, but it's going to be close here, chat. It's going to be close. She's going to save it for later, pivoting into the Lantern. And this forces Asper Shelzo to go for Moonblast if he wants any significant damage. He is going to go for the Moonblast. One shield remaining for Andres. Andres gets the shield call right. Saving the Annihilate. Annihilate very low on health in the back. And now we have Lantern versus Lantern. Andres will need two Thunderbolts to pick up the knockout here. As Thunderbolt does under half to a Lantern. So you are going to need two Thunderbolts. And now it's Ashra Shelto's turn to get the shield call direct. Both of them shielding new charge attacks. Andres not in a range where a Thunderbolt will KO. But does this set up a farm down for Ashra Shelto potentially? That could get a little worrying. The Thunderbolt connects. Andres... Her switch clock won't quite be up after this next Thunderbolt. It will be very close. It should be about one second from being up after this Thunderbolt. The shake of the head. Things not going her way here. The clock is up, but does not go for a switch. Oh, the peekaboo play. She gets the catch onto the Annihilate. Brings in the Lickitung with the energy. Switches into the Annihilate. Catches the Thunderbolt. What an unbelievable catch. In comes the Lickitung. It has energy, but will it be able to get rid of the Altaria? What an unbelievable play as she tries to fight back into this game. Two body slams, not going to do it. It's going to need to be the Lick damage plus the body slam here. Approaching the Sky Attack. And I don't think this slam is going to be enough. Ash for Shelto, he's worried. Is she at two? But she's just not. The body slam connects Altaria. It's charge attack priority. What an unbelievably close game. One turn separates a win from a loss. Sky Attack knocks out the Lickitung. And as for Shelto, by the narrowest of margins in both games, takes the 2-0 victory. Andres is not out of it. She will have an opportunity in the, in the loser's bracket. But what an unbelievable series. And you gotta feel for Andres. She played out of her mind. And unfortunately, it wasn't enough. All right, next matchup, we have Arceus Aurelius here. Right, Richard? Yeah. Arceus Aurelius was the... Oh, which one did he win, chat? Which one did he win? Arceus Aurelius, was he Dortmund? He was Dortmund. He was Dortmund that he won. Yeah, so he won Dortmund. And he has Shadow Polyrath, Claude Zire with Stone Edge, Mandibuzz, Lantern, Giratina Origin, and Dugong. Great question, Christopher. Uh, there was a research that gave them out at level 15, and then you had to trade them to get them to be at the level that you need. And we have a Lickitung, Skarmory, Trevenant, Carbink, Dueling Claude Zires, and a Polyrath. But yeah, there was a research that gave them out at level 15. And then from there, uh, you just have to... You just have to trade them. Alright. Chrissiati versus Arceus Aurelius. A good lead for Chrissiati. Polyrath does win this in all even shield scenarios. Let's take a peek in the back. We have Dueling Claude Zyres. Arceus is going to be firing off the Aerial Ace on alignment, so that way he is going to be able to get this damage before a debuff is applied. But two Aerial Aces do not knock out. And Chrissiati is going to continue to apply some pressure. Arceus Aurelius, the no shield here. He knows that this is a losing matchup for the Mandibuzz. He's going to save switch into his own Polyrath, and this is a problem for Chrissiati. Chrissiati going for the Icy Wind. He's thinking about it. He's counting in his head. He's like, wait, he's short. That's just the Icy Wind. He's going to let that go. In comes the Ligatung. And we're going to have a battle of Claude Zires in the back. The Giratina is 1489 CP. We don't know the exact rank, but it's 1489 CP. 
The Skull did not get a debuff, it looks like, there. Going for the body slam. Very, very well counted here by Chrissy Adi. Yo, what's up, Shadow? What's up, Polaris? Happy Friday. Let's go. The slam is going to pick up the knockout. In comes the Mandibuzz. Mandibuzz, despite the health disadvantage here, does so well into Lickitung as two body slams are not going to be enough to knock out here. Body slam is going to connect. Mandibuzz goes from in the yellow to still in the yellow. And he's going to bank the energy and send in the Claude. He banks the energy for later. In comes the Claude Zyre. An interesting play. He's saving moves to potentially get rid of that Polyrath later in the match. Slam is going to connect. We're going to see the switch into the Polyrath. Stone Edge will be enough to knock out here. Oh, goes for an Earthquake. I'm very surprised at this Earthquake. A Stone Edge will be enough to knock out here. It's non-stab and Claude Zyre has no attack, but the Polyrath has, has no HP. So a little inefficient use of energy there in my estimation. Going for the Body Slam. Built up to a Power Whip. Arceus Aurelius has a choice to make. Where does he use the shield? Yeah, I put it here because it's kind of where it has to go, unfortunately. If I put it elsewhere, I'm like covering their faces or covering the gameplay. So the teams are shown before each battle. The Earthquake connects. No catch onto the Mandibuzz. The slab, and he gets the farm down. He stayed in, so now it's Claude versus Claude, but he can guarantee land an Earthquake. He can guarantee land the Earthquake. But yeah, Arceus' full team is Polyrath, Claude Zyre, Mandibuzz, Dugong, Lantern, and Giratina Origin. He just goes for, for the Stone Edge. Arceus is going to let it go. The Stone Edge doesn't KO, and he makes the Earthquake. Claude versus Claude. These Pokemon do no damage, but also take no damage. The Earthquake is going to be shielded. In comes the Mana Buzz. There's back-to-back -back Dark Pulses ready to go, but I genuinely don't know if this knocks out because both of these Pokemon are so bulky. It'll be close. Double Dark Pulse will not knock out. We'll need a, more Snarls. I believe this plus one additional Snarl will knock out. We have the Dark Pulse into the Claude Zyre. Just does pick up the KO. And that's a game one win for Arceus Aurelius. Yeah, so Arceus Aurelius, the Dormand Regional Champion. Now, Chrissy Adi has competed before but has not been able to make a top cut. Competed at last chance qualifiers, EUIC, and Liverpool. So Chris Yachty looking to have a breakthrough performance here today, but going up against an incredibly difficult opponent in Arceus Aurelius, the Dortmund Regional Champion, a seasoned, experienced competitor. Looks like we have a lock in here for game number two, Shadow Polyrath versus Shadow Polyrath. And we do see the Giratina Origin in the back for Arceus Aurelius. He goes for the Skull. Chrissiati does not try for charge attack priority. Instead, he's just going to let this through. Does Scald get the debuff here? Scald into the Polyrath. Does it get the debuff? And I'll be honest. I was looking at the wrong screen. I didn't see if the debuff occurred or not. So my guess is it didn't. We'll see the Scald. Arceus commits the shield. The pivot into the Skarmory. This is a very interesting pivot here from Chrissyati. Chrissyati has no ability to farm down, but Arceus can't really afford to switch. So Chrissyati will be able to overfarm quite a bit in this matchup. Arceus more than happy because Chrissyati will be forced to throw. Ooh, throwing there. This is awkward for Arceus. Arceus shields. He wants to get this scald off, but then there's no shields left in the back, and Giratina can get brave burdened. Chrissyati can shield and steel wing down here if he wants to. And that's what he's going to do. This forces Arceus' hand to pivot. He pivots Claude because Claude can better tank the energy. This is a very interesting play. But a Stone Edge is not going to knock out the Skarmory here. The Stone Edge is not going to knock out the Skarmory. Like, part of the reason why people are not... Oh, but after the Brave Bird, it can. After that Brave Bird, it can. 
After the Brave Bird, it definitely can. The Stone Edge into the Skarm picks up the KO. Claude versus Claude. Oh, but Arceus is on a seven cycle. He'll outpace. He will. And landing that move means it's game over for Chrissyati. Yeah, Arceus on the seven cycle there. Because now this just sets up a very clean win for the Giratina Origin. I mean, Chrissyati still does have a catch available. He would need a catch to have any chance in this game. They both have catches available. Goes for the Earthquake, but an Earthquake does not knock out here. Yeah, I do stream from a laptop, yes. Earthquake connects. Oh, he gets the catch! He gets the catch! He waits the turn! But he gets the catch! Now Arceus needs the catch, switches in the wrath, he miscounts, and Chrissyati gets the equalizer there. Arceus waits the turn but lets him catch, and then doesn't know where Chrissyati's energy's at. Oh no, it all goes wrong for Arceus. Chrissyati gets the equalizer. There's nothing to be sus about Christopher, I mentioned this earlier. Like, there was a research that handed out level 15 Giratinas. And then if you trade them with a low friendship friend, there's a decent chance that it re-rolls below 1500. So there's nothing sus about it. I myself have one. Lots of people have one at this point. You needed to have done the research to get the level 15 Giratina. But if you have that, then you have an ability to trade it and have it go below 1500. Yeah, the annoying thing is that it requires a, a trade. Ooh, Polly into the claw. This is a good lead for Arceus. That opposing Polyrath for Chrissyati is going to be a problem in the back. That 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 opposing Polyrath is going to be a big issue for Arceus to deal with. Also, yes, what what Eugene said gets the debuff. And catches the Earthquake onto the Mandibuzz. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That's a debuffed Earthquake catch. What a play. Arceus with the redemption there. He didn't get the catch game two, but he gets a catch with an exclamation point in game number three. The debuff Stone Edge not going to do a lot of damage. Arceus... Continuing to farm an attempt at Nerial Ace catch onto the Skarmory, but Arceus holds onto the energy. And now he gets to fire off these Dark Pulses, and these Dark Pulses will chip away at Skarmory's health over time. Skarmory, a Sky Attack does almost nothing in this matchup, needing to land a Brave Bird or do a lot more Steel Wings if they actually want to pick up a Knockout. And they went lucky. Oh, that's painful, Yokai. That's painful. Oh, that's a good point, Andrew. Yeah. Sky Attack doesn't knock out here. Arceus is going to call this because he knows the Sky Attack doesn't knock out. This is the bulk of Mandibuzz right here. Look at that. Doesn't KO. Makes the Dark Pulse. <laughs> Mandibuzz is so dumb. <laughs> Mandibuzz is so dumb. He pivots Polly. He's going to shield and go for a counter down. Got a lucky Hundo. Oh no. Poly versus Poly, but this is where Arceus needs it. He's going for a guaranteed debuff. This is less damage, but it, the trade off is you get the guaranteed debuff from Icy Wind, where it's only 50% from Scald. Chrissyati calls the Icy Wind. Chrissyati, gonna try and go for a Scald here. Doesn't click the Scald because it wouldn't be enough to knock out. We see the shake of the head there. Another Icy Wind is gonna connect. He's now at minus two. So this Polyrath, its damage has been effectively completely neutralized going to fire off the scald arceus lets it go but he still does not have a lot of fast move pressure into this polyrath he has no fast move pressure to the polyrath sends in the dugong it is double debuffed however so he's not going to be shielding the skull you got a lucky one oh that's pain the scald oh that just does nothing does get the debuff Arceus has a catch, and he has an ability to reset a debuff here. 
In comes the Skarmory. Skarmory has no energy to speak of. Arceus just gonna farm up a ton of energy switch into the Mana Buzz. Able to save the energy and snipe with the Clawed. Double Icy Winds loaded. Chrissiati commits the shield. He has a move on that Skarmory. But Claude can't make the move. And Arceus Aurelius is going to take the 2-1 to one series victory here. As Skarmory has a move. But Arceus has the shield. Dugong gets the farm down. A very, very close series here. But a win for Arceus Aurelius. And also, Chad... If y'all want to see something cool, look who they have as the host for the event. They flew out Zoe Two Dots from either Australia or New Zealand. I think she lives in New Zealand. That they, they flew out Zoe to be the to be like the host. So basically, like interviewing players and stuff like that. Yeah, very cool. Yo, we got a rise sighting. Chat, we have a rise to the occasion sighting. Rise to the occasion with a Shadow Swampert. He's bringing it back. Shadow Swampert, Shadow Polyrath, Shadow Gligar, triple shadows from Rise. Skarmory, Lickitung, and Chargebug. Let's see who he's going up against, man. No Shadow Ain- Yeah, he was the one who popularized the Shadow Swamper and Shadow A9 core. And who's he going up against? Ooh, we don't see a name, but we see Cresselia, Shadow Gligar, Dugong, Vigoroth, Shadow Whizcash, and Chargebug. And a little Dragonite plush. Definite plus for the Dragonite plush, man. Oh, oh, it's WP. Yes, so it's WP uh Gengineer. Gengineer is a very good European battler. Game one, Skarmory into Vigoroth. This is a very awkward matchup. Skarmory to win the zeros has to land a Brave Bird. So Gengineer, his best placement was 13th at EUIC in 2022. But he's been at a lot of tournaments. Please chat. If you post spoilers, you're you're going to get like your your comments are gonna get removed. We don't want spoilers here, man. Favorite plush? Ooh, that's tough. Uh, where is he? Where is the boy? This plush right here, my shuckle. <laughs> My shuckle. All right, Gengineer sending in the charge bug. Charge bug hit with a brave bird that does so much damage. Shadow Swamp takes a ton of damage from an X Scissor, man. It takes a ton of damage from an X Scissor. Like this is why. Like, where having the shadow, like, look at this. This, prop, this is gonna do so much. Just like 60% of the health. In comes the shadow cash. Going for the shadow hydro. At the very least, Swamper can't apply pressure here. I wouldn't be surprised to see him stand and go for another hydro. And he wins charge attack priority. And that should be the game. That should be the game. Yep, he shields. That's game over. Game one win to rise. Game one win to rise. Yeah. Shadow Hydras do too much, but now there's nothing stopping the power whip. Yo, what's up, Liz Sunshine? Welcome in. Nice uh, name change there. I was updating the members list and I was like, oh, <laughs> we got a name change on our hands. No debuff. He just gets to go for the whip. Goodbye, Shadow Cash. Game one to rise. The members list will be updated as of tomorrow's video. We'll have to see. Yo, what's up, Venom? Uh, exclamation point Discord to get in the Discord. 
Alright, game one win to rise there. The swap ended up working out for him. It, it put a lot of pressure on the cash. Ooh, Gly into Vigo. Vigo does win zeros here. Oh, you have to apologize. Nah, I wasn't saying that in a bad way. I was just saying it because I saw the name change and I was like, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's not in a bad way. Yo, it's a little toner. Watch it at work instead of working. Let's go. Getting paid to watch Pogo. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. I'm... Yeah, uh, JCO on the official stream, I'm not 100% sure how the drops work. There's probably some kind of a command on the official stream that'll show it. So Rise wants switch advantage, man. So he's just gonna farm down and take swap. Oh no. He's gonna get charger bugged, man. He's gonna get charger bugged. Oh no. Well, this should be a, a, an equalizing win for WP Engineer. It is in London, yes. There's just no good way. To... Addy saves the shields for Charger. Oh yeah, he's cooked. Yeah, this is illegal amounts of over. This is illegal amounts of over. Yeah, there just isn't a win con in this match anymore. Yeah. There just isn't a win con in this match anymore. Like, he, I guess he tries to debuff with an Icy and then Brave Bird it, but it's still, it's looking bleak, man. It's looking bleak. Sends in the Skarm. But Genjineer can double up. And... If these two minus one discharges KO, it is very over. But even if it doesn't, it's I think it's still over regardless. Oh, I think he's gonna live it on like one. I think he's gonna live it on like one, but it doesn't win him the game. Goes for the Brave Bird. Yeah, I think he's thinking that maybe he should have like tried for a sky attack and to not KO it. Because this just gives Crest farm, and Crest will psycho cut him down. Yep. Yeah, unfortunate for Rise. Unfortunate for Rise. But even so, I don't, I don't think there's any way he wins that game. Like even if he gets the perfect undercharge, Polly still can't make a move before Crest does. Because Crest had it banked. And Polly would have been six off, so it, it was just an impossible game to win. But with Polly, when Crest came in, he couldn't pivot. Oh, Polly into Vigoroth! ABA weak! He caught him ABA to Wrath! Uh, this is the winner semis of Group E, so, so this is still day number one. I like throwing here because Vigoroth lives this on 1 HP. I like throwing here. That's a fair point. Brings in Crest. Going for the Shadow Scald. But he can put this on... I'm a bit surprised he isn't saving Polly, but I guess he's reading that he can do okay. But I mean, he has Licky on this. Or does he go Gligar into this? What does he do? Does he go Licky here? He goes Gligar. Okay. Dugong. Dugong's up a shield, which is uncomfortable. But this still feels playable for Ryze. This feels playable for Ryze. Yeah. I think you bait here is Rise, yeah. Correct, Juanissimo, yeah. Yup. Gets the shield. 
The awkward thing is now at minus two, Dugong lives a whip, so Dugong no longer has to shield if it doesn't want to. Yeah, because with Big gone, what is stopping you from pivoting Licky? Oh, he actually shields the whip. Okay. Oh, he didn't commit to a whip. He slammed. I think he had to commit to a whip there, chat. I think he had to commit to a whip there. I think he had to commit to a whip there. Oh, no. Because now he can't get to a dig before he makes the icy. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, he had to commit to a whip there. Oh, that's pain. That's pain. Rise is not out of it yet, though. He will still have a... He will still get to have a run through through the loser's bracket, but... Dugong is a menace, man. Up a shield, Dugong is so scary. That was just... Yeah. He was put in a really, really tough spot there, but he would have been better off committing to the whip and forcing Genjineer to throw, but I think he was worried about Genjineer tanking it and farming down. So it was a really awkward situation where if he commits to a whip and Genjineer doesn't throw, he loses the game. But if he pivots, if he slams and then pivots, he also loses the game. So his win con there was committing to a whip and hoping Genjineer threw a, threw a move at Licky. If Genjineer doesn't commit to a farm down, then Ryze can win it. But unfortunately, the middle ground there. Yeah, Ryze is like 6'5". I'm 6'2", and he I've met him in person, and he's very, very tall. Oh, chat, we have a familiar face here. We have a familiar face coming through here shortly. As we have Mr. Inadequance. Dunebug versus Hikami. Ooh, let's check out the dune bug team chat annihilate two water types lantern and his patented shadow whiskash the skarmory the lickitung and the shadow glygar and we have mandibuzz annihilate Yeah, so I I am one of the casters. I'm just not a caster for, for this event. And then for Kami, he has Mandibuzz, Annihilate, Claude, Skarm, Azu, and Chargeable. But yeah, also in a very surprising turn of events, chat. Which is honestly, to me, a shock. Chat, Axon lost round one. So Axon is going to have a brutal loser's bracket run ahead of him. Axon lost 2-1 in the very first round of this tournament. So if Axon wants his run to continue, he's going to have to go beast mode in, in the loser's bracket if he wants to make day two. But that's a definite surprise there. But yeah, Dune versus Hikami. Dueling Skarms. If we take a look at something like Hikami's team right here, this right here is why I am a big believer. Well, for a while it was called the lower bracket, but Niantic official, well, sorry, not, well, not Niantic, uh, Play Pokemon, the like Pokemon Company International have said that it is called the loser's bracket. So that's the official terminology we use. But a team like Hikami's is why I like Skarm so much in this meta. Because he has one flying resist. And it's his own Skarmory. So Brave Bird is going to hurt everything. But Dune brought a Lantern. So he has a, a second resist. Night Slash Ape. Standard across the board. Who did Axon lose to? Axon lost to... Uh, Koofji00. Zero zero. Yeah, there's a lot of Claude there. Honestly, I don't mind it because it is a bracket after you have come through and you've lost a game. 
but it's about the redemption stories that can emerge from there. All right, ooh, Mandibuzz into Shadow Cash. Chargebug is a big problem for Dunebug in the back. He has to bait it out. Honestly, I in these tournaments, I wouldn't run Claude. I disagree with the Claude resurgence. He pivots out. A surprise. A surprise. He's going for the Scald. He goes Lantern. Doesn't get the debuff. Going for the Shadow Ball here. Tough call to make if you're Dune. He gets the Shield Call right. He gets the Shield Call right. He Night Slashes here, understanding that Dune would throw one before the ball. <laughs> the Easter Bracket back from the dead. Nah, bro. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. He undercharges the bolt. Oh, what an undercharge. That's a beautiful undercharge by Dune there. Oh, my goodness. That's a beautiful undercharge by Dune. Wow. Hikami's charger could get very uncomfortable to deal with. I honestly like the terminology as it is. Loser's bracket is fitting. You lost a series. It doesn't mean you are a loser. You just lost a series, so you're in the loser's bracket. That undercharge was gorgeous. Holy. He does make another one, so Hikami's not going to let that happen. The issue is he's taking damage on the Shadow Cache, and Shadow Cache does not take X's as well. Like, we are approaching X's range rapidly here. He's going to let it go. Does he snipe with a move from Mandy? Oh, I like that. Because that puts pressure on, on the shield for Dune. He lets it go. Oh, he's going to try and win the game with Skarmory. He's going to try and win the game with Skarmory. Oh, this will be interesting. That was beautifully played by Hikami there. That pressure was... Oh. That was that was exquisite. Just a, the the application of pressure in that matchup was so good. This is going to be incredibly difficult for Dune. He's going to have to play this basically perfectly to win this game. He's going to tank this and then just look to steel wing all the way down. He's not in Volt Switch range yet. Does he get there? He does get there, and that's game. And that and that should be game. Because Charger Bug should just be able to make a move. Charges like two off. Yeah, GG's. GG's. Wow. Dune getting outplayed is something you almost never see. Well, the good news is, is there there is a bracket reset. Like, four grands. If the loser's bracket person wins, then there is a bracket reset. In a which matchup, Mithril? Ooh, Gly into Azu. And as we see, the, the battlefield changed to Rainy. Pivot Shadow Cash. Oh, he sends in the ape, but he gave him a huge energy lead. He gave him a massive energy lead. Dune can probably flip this now. Especially with a debuff. And there it is, right on cue. Does he call this? He shields. He will be on his five cycle after his next one there. So he throws two. So a weather boost doesn't affect PVP. 
Gets another debuff, and he can take swap, I think. I think he can just take swap now. Which he needs so desperately. Because he, he got two debuffs. This doesn't KO. This doesn't KO now. He got two debuffs, bro. It doesn't KO. <laughs> that does nothing. Shadow Cash flipping an ape with debuffs there. And now Hikami just has completely atrocious alignment. Yeah, so weather boosts don't affect PvP itself. Yo, the screen mirror on Dune's uh, screen is struggling right there. That is struggling. Just for this. And Charger, I mean, this is looking just so good for Dune. Yeah. Oh, and the exquisite timing as well. Exquisitely timed. But yeah, Shadow Cash is... Shadow Cash is crazy. Shadow Cash is crazy, man. Like, Grass is very awkward to bring in this meta. Because there's so many things that just clown on Grass. But without Grass, Cash is so free. Cash is so free, man. And yeah, I mean, he uh, can't farm down, so he he's able to make two aces. Yeah, Scald is a deeply unserious move. <laughs> Scald is a deeply unserious move. Ever heard of Mantine? I actually have not. What is that? Yo, what's up, FX Osti? I don't know what a Mantine is. If you had told me that the uh, only buffed mon that I would see on on the like high ladder of Grey League would be uh, <laughs> would be the uh, Water Pulse Mantine, I would I would not have believed you. I would not have believed you. Yo, what's up, Phoenix? But yeah, Water Pulse Man Mantine is everywhere, man. Also, chat. While we're here, can I show you what happened to me yesterday? Because I need some uh, either sympathy or rip bozos in chat. Hold on. I got to show y'all what happened to me yesterday. I've seen a couple. I've, I've seen like one or two gators. And that's, and that's really been it. Alright, uh, this happened to be yesterday, chat. Hold on. That happened to me yesterday. I got $29.99 for the first time since season 3. And then I dropped. And then I dropped. I lost ELO after. I was so sad, man. I got $29.99. Oh. Truly, truly terrible days. Truly terrible days. Yeah. Also, if you're enjoying this, the watch party chat, please do me a favor and like the stream. It's entirely free, and I believe it helps it get recommended to new people who might also like the stream. Nah, it was with a different team. I'm debating whether I make a $29.99 heartbreak. It was a 4-1 set, and I lost the game on my Shadow Cast lost, I mean, correctly, but it lost charge attack priority to a Giratina origin. And then I got $29.99. Game number three. What a lead for Dune. Gligar into Annihilate. The safe switch into the Mana Buzz. Answered with the Lantern. But this is what Hikami is looking for. He's looking to try and bait out the Lantern to sweep with the Skarmory. Mandibuzz does have an ability to fight back here, especially if it is high rank. It's not going to win the matchup, but it's about setting up the Annihilate with energy.
Yo, good luck, Danny's. You got this. Yeah, like, at first, I was... I don't know. I, I do feel like there is a lot of value in, like, kindness and avoiding being, like, deliberately mean. But in the particular instance of loser's bracket versus lower bracket, I have no issue with, um calling it the the loser's bracket yeah i might i might do a video titled like 29.99 elo heartbreak <laughs> and then because genuinely i had some amazing games i had a game where my vigoroth in an end game beat and annihilate yo we got the go vergy in chat yo dude i swear every time like hold on i'm gonna i'm gonna grab a link Ver vergy's been crushing it with the uploads man I'm gonna grab a link to Vergie's channel. Vergie. All right. If you haven't already checked out Vergie, check him out, man. He has been posting some very, very good stuff. Just relying on that Skarm sweep, but it's Shadow Cash, and that Skarm sweep ain't happening. Yeah. I mean, if you get one debuff, I'm pretty sure you live a Brave Bird. So. As long as he lands one Scald, I don't see him shielding the cash. Yeah, he just doesn't shield the cash and he just wins. Yep, exactly. Exactly! I haven't seen this, chat, but that's exactly how you play it. That's exactly how you play it. Building up to double Mud Bomb. Charge attack priority. You see deep off, so this just knocks out. Absolutely brutal. Absolutely brutal. Uh, dude just doesn't shield here. You just win the game by not shielding. Yep, easy. Because he is debuffed to hell and back. So you can just double up. Yeah. Dude, Dune is a machine. Dune is a machine. Please catch 10 and Skarmor, it's facts. A lot of people liked the bulk of it, like, the regular is way better into Charge Bug, for example, but... Dune takes it! So that's Winner's Finals of Group D, so that's Dune Bug in Day 2, chat. That's Dune Bug in Day 2. Oh, it's Jox! Yo, Jox for status stand is gonna be an amazing game, man. Jox was one of the first legends in the world as well. So, Statistan has been a tenured, tenured competitor. So, Statistan was 5th at Utrecht, 5th at Liverpool, 7th at Stuttgart, 9th at Gdansk, 3rd at 2023 EUIC, third at 20 uh second at 2023 utrecht and third at 2023 liverpool he's searching for his first ever win but he has been unbelievably consistent top cut after top cut the teams are revealed and he has triple flyer skarmory shadow glygar altaria vigoroth chryselia and lantern and let's see for jocks jocks has mandibuzz a triple Flyer as well with Shadow Gligar, Skarmory, and Mandibuzz. Moonblast, Cresselia, Shadow Whiskash, and Lantern. His legend team was actually the Lantern, Shadow Cash, and Cresselia. So he's bringing Pokemon he's very comfortable with. We'll have to see if that Cresselia double water line gets brought in any of these games. But yeah, this is a matchup of two Titans here. But look at the accomplishments again. Top 8, top 8, top 8. He had two second place finishes in 2023 and a third place finish in 2023. Yeah, uh, that's a good point, Sky. Yeah, Vergi is another good spot where if you're a Master League enjoyer, Vergi is a fellow Master League enjoyer. What a... And we see him get the perfect lead. Scarberry into Cresselia. The save switch into the Mana Buzz. But Stan does not have a good response to the save switch here. And Jocks de the timers with an immediate Dark Pulse. Every Mandibuzz in this tournament is going to be on Dark Pulse. That has become the standard set.
for Stan. He's going to chip with a Brave Bird and then look to send in one of his other Mons. Jox lets it go. The Skarmory already down about 33% of its HP. And now he sends in the Altaria. Altaria able to absorb this energy and farm down in a way that Vigoroth cannot. Vigoroth, I mean, it can survive the Dark Pulses, but not nearly as well as something like Altaria. Whereas Altaria tanks that Dark Pulse, it's nowhere close to half HP. So for Stan, this is an opportunity to get energy here, and he doesn't care about this damage because he's already viewing the Altaria as a sunk cost, being able to get some damage on onto the Cresselia, but eventually succumbing to a Moonblast. Yo, what's up, Chris? Welcome in. This tournament's been absolutely insane so far. In comes the Cresselia. He's going to get double Sky Attack here, which does get valuable damage onto Jox's Cresselia. Sky attack number one. And I actually would have liked to see a Moonblast there. We do see the No Shield by Jox. I guess Sky Attack forces Jox to not commit to a farm now. Oh, he's looking to switch into the Lantern and it's answered with the Vigoroth. This is neutral enough where I don't see a path forward for Jox. Yeah, this is neutral enough. And Stan knows that after one Surf landing, He's not in real danger of 10 sparks KOing here or 11 sparks KOing. And that's what he would, and that's what Jocks would need. So this should just be a game one win to Stan. But yeah, this is an unbelievable matchup. This is the winner's finals of group G chat. Stan still has yet to use the shield on the Vigoroth. Vigoroth deep into the red, but the Sparks just not doing what Jox needs them to do. Can he make another? He cannot. The slam is reached. And this just ah, gets him so low. I really don't see a path forward here for Jox. He can try and farm down. I guess that's what he's going to try for. He gets the farm down, exits with energy. The Altaria is still alive and can force energy. The switch! into the Cresselia. Stan lets it go, but this sets up the Skarmory. Skarmory still has HP. Jox has a move, but Stan has a shield and a Skarmory, and this Skarmory just looks inevitable in this endgame here. The Moonblast, easy no shield for Stan. This does not threaten whatsoever, and this again showcases the power of Skarmory in this format, being able to invalidate these bulky, incredibly effective mons like Cresselia and Lickitung and invalidating the most flexible mon in the entire format, the Gligar. So Stan winning charge attack priority there. The competitors exchange thumbs up as Brave Bird KOs the Lantern. And this is the second time we've seen a Skarmory KOing a Lantern to win a game. Wow. Skarmory is just unbelievable in this format. It's just unbelievable. Uh, yeah, Reggie doesn't exist anymore because it's so bad into Annihilate. Like, Reggie had play in the Medicham meta because in the, like, it's so bad into Annihilate and it's horrible into Gligar. And those two things, well, honestly, the Gligar more so than the Annihilate killed it, but Gligar being the best, like, the, the top usage mon in basically every tournament means that you can bring Reggie, but it's really tough. I'm going to be posting a, a pretty good Jungle Cup team after this stream. I have a video made on it. Ooh, Vigoroth in the Lantern. Oh, the Skarm's in the back. Jox. He really needs switch advantage here, man. He really needs switch advantage. Yeah, it's not entirely dead, but in these formats, it's it, it's a really hard bring. Because you just because you have to build so strong to Gligar, and that really limits your options by bringing a Registeel. He's gonna let it go. Vigoroth does lose zeros here. Jock shields. Interesting. So he is going for switch advantage. Alt. 
He can't really pivot here, so he's just gonna stay in and go for a bolt. Stan's not gonna shield this, cause Stan, Stan's relying on two shield Skarmory to win this game. Cash as well, yeah. He's relying on two shield Skarmory to win this game, and it probably can. Does he save this energy for a potential snipe? He doesn't. That's very interesting. But yeah, also like Reggie was able to win the zeros versus Metacham. Like back when it didn't run dynamic. Uh, does he just go for the catch on the Skarmory? He does! Skarm, man. How do you deal with Skarm? It's so deadly, dude. And this is from someone who I thought Skarm went ahead air slash was the most trash mon ever, because it was. But now with Steelwing and now with the meta shifts into where Skarmory beats everything that's important, it's so valuable. You never shield this as Jocks because he he will never Brave Bird here. So that's absolutely a right call. Stan lets it go, which means Jocks can now go for Aerial Aces. There's no move on the ult. There is no move on the ult. He lets it go, calling that it- Oh, it's the Brave Bird! He was calling that it was the little move. He does make the Aerial Ace. Stan lets it go. He's saying, I'm winning with two shield Altaria. I'm winning with two shield Altaria. He's looking to switch here. Altaria, he's going for a Grass Knot. It's double resisted. He's shielding everything. Stan needs to make two Sky Attacks. This will be incredibly close. Sky attack. Jocks will commit the final shield. This still isn't quite Grass Knot range. Jocks needs to make a Grass Knot plus a Moon Blast here. He Grass Knots. Honestly, this is really close to Grass Knot range. This is really close to Grass Knot range. Can he get there? He cannot! Oh no! Oh, so close. Getting outpaced by one turn there. And let's check the sim. Cress versus... Versus alt. How much does a grass knot do? A grass knot does 10%. Oh, that's so close. That's so close. A grass knot may have KO'd there. It's really, really close. Jocks will have another opportunity in the loser's bracket, of course. Oh, and now we have Coke Shock versus M.E. Weedle. Chet, these are, these are two Discord members, by the way. These are two Discord members. M.E. Weedle is the, um, is the 2022 Seniors Division World Champion. And he was the, uh, which regional did he win, man? So these are two regional winners. He won Stuttgart in 2023 and Worlds in 2022. And Kokshiak won Warsaw. So these are two regional champions. Weedle is a regional champion and a world champion. Uh, Weedle has, has, been, has been legend time and time again, double tap. And Kokshiak versus Weedle. As a reminder, chat. These are kids. So any comments that are negative about the kids and their appearance are going to be deleted. These are kids. There are different rules. I am an adult. You can say, Henry, you look like a Tyrannosaurus today. You look like shit. That's fine. I'm an adult. These are kids. They have different rules. If you say dumb shit about the children, you will not be returning to my chat. All right, general disclaimer, general disclaimer. All right, that's out of the way. Let's let's look at teams. I like to have that, that disclaimer anytime there are kids on screen. Altaria, Mandibuzz, Lantern, Regular Cash, Shadow, Alolan Sandslash with Shadow Claw, and Night Slash Ape. And M.E. Weedle, 
Altaria, Lantern, Skeledurge, Shadow Lull and Sand Slash, as well with Shadow Claw, Vigoroth, and Cresselia. Both of these two battlers here are better than I will ever be, and better than basically and anyone watching. They're both regional champions. Weedle's a world champion. Unbelievable. Unbelievable talent. This and they're both in the Discord. So they're both homies. I just hope they both have have a good battle and it goes to three games. Lantern into Vigoroth. Typically, you will give the slight edge to the Lantern in this matchup. And we... Oh, that Skeledurge in the back for Weedle looks incredibly deadly into what Coke Shock has back there. Weedle running a line with the Vigoroth, the Skeledurge, and the Altaria. And... Ooh, this, this could get complicated. He's going for the Thunderbolt here. Thunderbolt into the Vigoroth. No shielded by Weedle. Going for another body slam. This does not knock out. Coke Shot gonna let this go. But this, this could get, oh man. This could get interesting here because he can win switch. But if Weedle shields this, it's better for Coke Shock. Like, if we don't play some switch, but we don't let it go. He lets it go. In comes the Dirge. And this is so bad. Oh, this is just the Skeleton sweep. This is just the Skeleton sweep. We love, look at Weedle, man. <laughs> He's like, yo, let's go. Oh, no. This hurts. This hurts for Coke Shock, man. This hurts for Coke Shock. It is officially Flat Fuck Friday, chat. It is officially Flat Fuck Friday. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Certified Dirge Masterclass right here. Does he just undertap it for CMP? He does, and he wins CMP. This CMP actually means Kokshia can win this. Hold on. This CMP means Kokshia can win this game. Oh, it wasn't CMP! Weedle waited a turn! I thought it was CMP, but Weedle waited a turn. Weedle waited a turn. Weedle waiting a turn again. The thing is, if he can live two incinerates here, which I think he can, he can get a drill run. Not over. Not over, man. Oh, but he gets the disarming. And that is over. He gets the disarming, man. He gets the disarming, and that is over. And that is over. Oh, man. The Dirge Rampage by Weedle. Everyone gave up on Dirge, and he sees the ult, and he's like, oh, I was so close to winning. The Dirge Rampage, man. Holy. Everyone else is running talent. But Weedle stick into the dirge and it pays off in game number one. Here's the thing though. These are two regional champions that are facing off. If anyone can get the equalizer here, it, it is Kokshiak. Altaria into Vigoroth. Okay. Vigoroth wins the two straight body slam. A Tolik accent unfortunately lost round one, but he is. Oh, he tries for the catch out of the ape. He tries for the catch out of the ape. He's unsuccessful. And he doesn't get CMP. Oh, no. He tried to go for CMP. Weedle doesn't throw it. That's an incinerate for free. He does get a second night slash, though. Though, Kokshiak very much not out of this yet. That catch there would have been beautiful, but unfortunately. What makes them better? Uh, they can perform under the expectation and light and the lights on a big stage, and I can't. <laughs> I can't do that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not built like that. I'm not built like that. Like, it's easy to just play from home. Having to play with thousands watching is a whole other skill level. It's a whole other skill level. 
And that, that dirge 3-2-2 two, two cycle right there was rough. He goes big to put pressure on him. Yup. Oh man, this is, this is very well played by Weedle. This is very, very well played by Weedle. Weedle is just amping up the pressure more and more and more. Not putting his foot off the gas pedal here. He can shield, get rid of the Altaria. Weedle just has absolute death grip on this game right now. Like, just absolutely, any win con is just being crushed by Weedle. Adding barely KOs. Lantern in the back. Altaria wins this game. He can CMP with a rock slide here if he wants to. Okay. He just goes for a slam. But yeah. Unfortunate for Coke Shock, but he's not out of it yet. He will go to Losers Finals, and he'll still have another chance to make day two. But yeah, the Altaria for Weedle was really effective in making Kokshak bench the Whizcash. So then Dirge was so free. And then he just top lefts. Yeah, GG's. Which you are allowed to do now. You are allowed to top left on stage now. They changed it. They changed it. You are allowed to top left on stage now. So we uh, do get to see it. We uh, do get to see it. Axons in the loser's bracket. Axons in the loser's bracket. All right, next set. Obidomac versus Arceus Aurelius. Arceus with his Claude Sire Giratina team. Hold on. Let's... I want to take a look at these teams again. Obidomac has Lantern, Shadow Gligar, Shadow Cash, Skarmory, Cresselia, and Vigoroth. And Arceus Aurelius has the Shadow Polyrath. Claude, Mandy, the Lantern. Um, a lot of people have been running it because it it applies pressure to Whiskash. Yeah, it applies pressure to Whiskash. Yo, I'm gonna message Weedle. Obadomac, it, um, does it, I don't think it, has Obadomac competed before? Obadomac competed at, at Utrecht. Honestly, the uh, pressure as a caster is nothing compared to the stage. Yeah, it is, it is honestly nothing because we are just in the back. Like we we are on our own stage behind the screen. Like behind like we're on our own like set behind the stage. So we don't have to see the people. Alright, Obadomac versus Arceus Aurelius. We've seen Arceus' team before. Obadomac, pretty standard stuff. Take a look at the movesets. Moonblast on Crest. And uh Dugong that's supposed to say Icy Wind. Oh, Mandy into Gligar. Mandy, so this right here will be an opportunity to look at matchup preparation. Mandibuzz wins the Zero Shield if it goes Pulse Double Ace. If you double pulse, you lose the zeros to Shadow Glidar. So this will be a very interesting situation of just how much specific matchup knowledge is known. Or Obadomac might have Obadomac might have an attack weight Glygar. I know versus high rank Glygar, you have to pulse into double ace to win zeros. That is a, a mandate right there. He is going double pulse, so I think judging by the damage, he's calling that Obadomag doesn't have a high rank Shadow Gligar. The pulse is shielded. 
but like versus mine, which is a rank 22, I win the zeros if they double pulse. But as the Manda, yeah, typically dark pulse double ace will always win you the zeros. Oh, catches the ace onto a lantern. But bad news for the lantern, bud. Does she just rebag and go Tita? <laughs> oh, let's go, Giratina, man. Yo, what's up, Matt? Good to see you, homie. Hope you are doing well. Nice slash nah. The the coverage of Aerial Ace and Dig is is too good to pass up for a small chance at a boost. Shadow Bolt to Bolt. Perfect counting by Arceus Aurelius. ball just does not KO. I mean, a bolt doesn't KO either, but he would have loved to get that knockout and keep the health on, on the Tina. Yo, what's up, the Bear of War? Welcome in, homie. He brings in Vig to just go for a counter down. This is definitely the right play here because Vig invalidates this energy. And up energy, here's the thing. Vigoroth is a nuisance for Polyrath up energy. So if you're Arceus, you have to pivot. But this makes the Gligar put on this. Like, he has to pivot or he loses. But by pivoting, he might lose. So, Obadomac there, by bringing in Vigo and getting that huge energy lead, puts Arceus in a borderline unwinnable position instantly. It's a beautiful play. It's a beautiful play by Obadomac. And he's going to shield because he wants the Aerial Ace. Oh, if he didn't throw it, if he didn't throw it, he could have countered down. If he didn't throw it, he could have countered down. Oh, that hurts. And now he has no health. And he has a billion energy on Vigo, and Vigo wins CMP here. Oh, masterclass by Obadomac, man. Obadomac's only previous tournament was Utrecht, where he was 49th. So this would be a big improvement for him. A pretty massive improvement. That was so well played. That was so well played. And that was all set up by the Lantern barely hanging on and getting that Thunderbolt to put it into counter down range. Yeah, that was beautifully done. Very, very nice. Yeah, Vig up energy, if you don't have an Annihilate, is horrifying to deal with. I think that's also part of why we're seeing more Claude, is Claude can actually slightly handle Vigoroth up energy, but realistically, it's not going to do amazing there. Oh, it's Gira into Vigoroth! And he read ABA weak to Vigoroth! Oh, no! And Arceus Aurelius is about to get 2 owed. That's just game over on the spot! It's instantly done. Um, typically, it's Saturday, Sunday, but for the international tournaments, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's instantly game over. Arceus is never going to shield this. He's just going to go for Giratina, but Wrath is going to take too much damage from the Glide. Like, Wrath will be up a shield, but it'll take too much damage, Shadow on Shadow, from the Gligar to be able to sweep this game. So Arceus will be able to make this close, but he he cannot win this. He doesn't have a win con. He doesn't have a win con in this match. But this shows why Vigoroth is an absolute nuisance, man. Goes for charge attack priority. My 2999 team had had a Vigoroth on it. And it's Gly in the back, yeah. But watch the wing attacks here. Like, Arceus will be able to defeat the Gligar, but watch his health bar with the wing attacks. By the time he gets Icy Wind number two, he will have lost both shields and he will be in body slam range. So the game will be done. There, there just isn't a path forward in this game for Arceus Aurelius. But, 
barring a major screw up by Obed Domac, but he just clicks Aerial Ace and wins game. This instantly ends the game. Because only four charge attacks will have been thrown, which means the clock is not up for him to catch a body slam. Four charge attacks plus the fast moves is, is not enough time. And then he just clicks body slam and wins the game. Yep. Beautiful piloting of Vigoroth there from Obidomac. He just goes for the Shadow Ball, but he needs like four of these. And he's not going to get it. He is just not going to get it. Well, Arceus made the read that he wouldn't lead Vigoroth. And he led Vigoroth. So Arceus just, just made an incorrect read, basically. And that's what cost him there. Ooh! Mr. McCalvin, who really impressed earlier, is in winner's finals, but he's going up against one of North America's best in Arrow. Arrow with a Whimsicott! Hello? Shadow Gligar, Skarmory, Whimsicott, Guzzlord, Shadow Charizard, and Lantern. One of the more innovative teams that we have seen so far. And Mr. McCalvin with Cresselia Vigoroth. That core was so deadly at Goyanya. The Chargebug, Shadow Gligar, Mandibuzz, and Shadow Izcat. So Mr. McCalvin being here is not surprising at all. Because he performed extremely well in that first matchup of the day. So seeing him here is just not a surprise. It's not a surprise at all. Mr. McCalvin played played perfectly in that first game, basically. And Arrow is an absolute menace. So this is going to be an incredibly good game. He's on Seed Bomb, so Whimsicott doesn't have a lot of closing power grass-wise, but it's very spammy. Brutal Swing on Guzzlord, so no debuff chance. Moonblast Cresselia. Uh, the uh, Gligar's thing is bugged. It's supposed to say Dig. Dark Pulse. Yeah, pretty standard. Yeah, Arrow's running a very cool team. Oh, Shadow Charizard and Amanda Buzz. This is not where you want to be if you're Arrow. This is not where you want to be at all. Because Amanda Buzz is one of the few things in the format that can tank a neutral blast burn. And Mr. McCalvin more than happy to let this go. Dark Pulse is going to do massive damage. He might honestly just go double ace because double ace will knock out. He goes for the pulse. This will get Charizard deep into the red. This is going to do a ton of damage. This is going to do so much damage. He Dark Pulses. Zard can make a... Oh, Zard can't make the claw. I think he's just going to farm with Gligar. He's just going to pivot into Vig. Does he just ace here right away? He aces here because due to the one turn switch, he can deny Mr. McCalvin a full sneak. Mr. McCalvin only gets a half sneak there instead of a full one. But his Whimsicott, it's about to get, uh, <laughs> it's about to get Gligard in the worst way, man. It's about to get Gligard in the worst way. Yeah, this is... I do see a path forward for Arrow, though. If Arrow lets it go and farms with Whimsy, there's a path to win this game. But he shields, and there's no longer a path to win this game. Uh, it's a two-turn versus two-turn. Switching takes a turn, so he's one turn behind. So if he throws before Mr. McCalvin does, Mr. McCalvin doesn't get a full sneak. But yeah, Whimsy just gets Gligard here. Mr. McCalvin says, meta's meta for a reason, dude. And that's just game. And the catch? Oh, Mr. McCalvin is just saucing on him today. Good grief. Good grief, man. This is... <laughs> nah, nah. He cooked him like Thanksgiving dinner, chat. He cooked... He put him in the oven, set him to 325, 
and set the little egg timer on the side. Oh no, man. Oh no. Not like this. And he lets it go to the sea bomb. Oh no. <laughs> oh jeez. What a showing by Mr. McCalvin, man. His first tournament, and he's been playing lights out Go Battle League. My goodness, what a performance. And he just doesn't even look phased. It's just surgical to him. It's just surgical to him. Which, hey, chat, it will not surprise you at all that his peak ELO in season 16 was 3714. Mr. McAlvin's peak ELO in season 16 was 3714. <laughs> Yeah. He fit. Oh, and it's the same leads as last game. Yeah, he, he literally just plays the exact same team. There's a reason why he's making zero mistakes. There's a reason why he's making zero mistakes, man. He is just built like that. He's just built like that. I was happy last season when I got 3,500, man. I was ecstatic. But yeah, 3,700. Second in the world, he finished the season. He aces this time. Ace is the uh, cleaner play. So he adjusted how he played from last game. Arrow might... Ooh, Arrow lets it go. Is he... Yeah. Yeah. He uh, cleaned up the play pattern there. And again, he just pivots Vig. Vig pivot is... It's so safe into Arrow's team. It's so safe into Arrow's team. Um, you you would probably have to add more games in a season because the the issue, the reason why people peak at about thirty five to thirty seven hundred is because Elo can only go up as long as you have people to play, and there just aren't people to play at thirty seven hundred Elo for him to get much higher. Yeah, this is an absolute clinic by Mr. McAlvin. It's an interesting CMP. Yeah, he's, he, he's, 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 he's gonna let it go here. That makes sense. He does still have a catch available. Oh, he's water gun. What the? Oh. Somehow I missed that arrow was on water gun. Well, that dramatically changes the, uh, <laughs> that dramatically changes the math. I didn't realize he was on water gun, bro. All right, Mr. McCalvin needs a wicked nutty catch. That changes the calculus quite a bit. Oh, he gets the catch! But Arrow's saying he can't make it. Arrow's full charging it and saying that he can't make a move. The water guns will be too much. And he's right. He takes it. He takes it. Yo, what's up, X Delay? Good to see you, homie. Arrow with the confidence saying, my water guns will farm you down. I'm full charging this on the Manda Buzz. Wow. Well, well done with WinCon identification by Arrow there. Beautiful. You went forward to... Yo, you competed there, homie? Yo, that's awesome, man. Yo, 4-2 is hype, man. Congrats. 4-2 is hype. Oh, you went with Mr. McAlvin? That's awesome. He's been cooking, man. He's been cooking. Mr. McAlvin has been frying kids this tournament. Swampert? Oh, boy. We had another. Hold on. 
They switched from, from replay to the actual game so quickly. Uh, Cash just does what it does better. Ooh, Gligar into Manda Buzz. Again, this would be a check of how well do you know the Mandy versus Gligar matchup. How well do you know it? Pulse double ace, guaranteed zero shield win. Ooh, a shielded pulse. And he has big crest in the back. Oh boy, switch matters a lot. Switch matters so much. I'm pretty sure Mr. McAlvin was on Moonblast, if I'm not mistaken. If he's not on Moonblast, he he has no path forward in this game, but I'm pretty sure he was on Moonblast. Arrow double shielding for Switch. Let's Mr. McAlvin get a Dark Pulse. I think Mr. McAlvin is going to be pretty happy with how this turned out. Like, Arrow is selling out for Switch, but Vigoroth is going to be really annoying to deal with. Oh, he pivots Crest and Arrow throws a move. Arrow did not want to throw that move. Arrow did not want to throw that move, man. He, uh... Arrow did not want to throw that move. Yeah, uh, throwing that move is a small misplay by Arrow because you have Skarmory to wall this. Your energy is more useful later on. Your energy is more useful later on. Was that a... Oh no, I thought I saw a Moonblast debuff. I did see a Moonblast debuff! I did see a Moonblast debuff! I did see a Moonblast! I was like, wait, wait! But it didn't show up for ages. There was a Moonblast debuff! Yeah. <laughs> Bro. I would be pissed. If I was Arrow, dude. Mr. McAlvin doesn't have a move to snipe with. Which is unfortunate. Ooh. Saving all the energy, resetting the debuff, getting the head start on the guzz. Clawing here is really good. Ooh, this will be tough. Arrow gave up both shields. But I would rather be Arrow in this moment. He has energy everywhere. Arrow has energy everywhere. The thing is, though, Vig wins CMP over everything Arrow brought. So he has energy everywhere, but if Mr. McAlvin just farms down, and he does, everything loses CMP to Vig, Chet. He has two rock slides. He wins. Everything loses CMP to Vig. Everything loses CMP to Vig. Oh, what a beautiful win got identification by Mr. McAlvin. I thought Mr. McAlvin would have to throw, but he commits to the farm down. And there's no way to win the game for Arrow. What a beautiful play. What a beautiful play by Mr. McAlvin. Okay. Vigoroth masterclass in this series. Jeez. Vigoroth masterclass by Mr. McAlvin. So, X-Delay, you, you might know this. Is uh, Mr. McAlvin from, from Europe then? Or uh, did he travel very far for this? Because I've heard of the name, but I have but I know a lot of people traveled from all over the world for it. He's from Israel? Oh, wow, that's a hell of a flight. Holy shit. Onion versus Snowman? Onion traveling from, from America. So, again, like, people are traveling from all over the world. For, for this tournament in London. Like, Onion's American, Rise is, there's a ton of Americans, there's a ton of people from all over the world. Which is, it almost feels like, it almost feels like Worlds, but it's not Worlds. Like, yeah, the uh, level of competition is just insanity at these tournaments. This is your first regional? Oh, that's awesome. So Onion has Shadow Polyrath, Shadow Gligar, Altaria. No, go back. Cresselia, Shadow A slash Lantern. Snowman has Skarm, Lantern, Shadow Cash, a Vigoroth, Altaria, 
and the Shadow Gligar. I've never competed, no. I've casted two regionals, but I've never competed. All right, Standard Wrath, Standard Glide, Moonblast Crest, Powder Snow A Slash, and Altaria. Onion really likes running like RPS mons, like he heavily alignment dependent mons. And Wrath, Alt, and Slash are all really strong RPS mons. Dude, Wrath? Wrath's energy eats this team alive. Yeah, like anyone who is just there watching, like whether it's us watching from home or at the venue, is seeing just a level of play that is absurd. So Onion has a rank one crest, Talik? Yo, that's crazy. Uh, from Reggie Raids, it's guaranteed to be below 1500 CP, but it is still worth trading it to try and get uh, trade IVs. Uh, Rise unfortunately lost 2-1, but he should still be on the loser side of the bracket. Lantern into Lantern. Oh, that Wrath in the back is going to completely destroy Snowman unless he saves his Lantern here. Oh, boy. I think, <clears throat> judging by how I'm seeing this, this should just be an instantly won game for Onion Frank. And my reasoning is, Snowman will probably, and also Onion wins charge attack priority. So, winning charge attack priority in the mirror, and... If, if Onion, if Snowman somehow shields for Switch, Onion can bring in Cress, Snowman can't pivot, and then Wrath up a shield just sweeps. Yeah, if he catches on Vig, that's a very good point, Matt. Waits the turn, goes for the Bolt, he gives up Switch. He's gonna bring in Vig. But up energy, Onion puts Cress on this 11 times out of 10. What? I am shocked he didn't put Cress on that. I am shocked he didn't put Cress on that, bro. What? Now Snowman just wins. Wait, Snowman, Snowman screwed up. Snowman screwed up, hold on. Snowman, why would you do what you did? Why would you switch there? You just get absolutely punched by this Polyrath now, bro. Polly is farming you down, and then Crest wins the game. If you're Snowman, you just stay in there. Because Scar beats everything else he can have. Because here's the thing about Scar, it is no fast attack pressure here. He gets fully countered down. Yeah. Yeah. Onion through by not putting Cress on the Vig and just trusting that Wrath can beat everything. He gets another Icy. Yeah. So doomed. So doomed. And this Vig's energy has never been more useless in his entire life. Uh, look at this body slam do no damage right here. Cause it's it's double debuffed at this point. <laughs> oh god. But yeah, you can't bring Skarma to Wrath like that, man. You just can't. you just can't. Cause you have no fast attack pressure with with stealing. Yeah, Onion, Onion will uh, chat to his competitors quite a bit. Yeah, oh, but, but look at this. Top 8 San Antonio, top 8 Portland, top 3 Knox, top 8 Peoria. He's had a lot of top cuts, but he hasn't been able to win a regional yet. He's been very, very consistent at top cutting. Oh, what a lead! The save switch into the Gligar. He responds with a Lantern, but this is not... Like, unless you're running some weird Spark Breakpoint tech... This is not an amazing matchup for Onion. Unless he's running some like weird, like he did win CMP in the Lantern Mirror, so he could be running some weird spark breakpoint tech. He 
place to charge attack priority. Let's it go. Many concede switch. In comes the wrath, trying to counter down and can't quite get there. Yeah, he he did not come. I mean, he could have brought the Cress in, but up energy, Gly can flip that. Goes for the icy wind. Here's the thing, though. Cress is going to be annoying to deal with. Cress is going to be really annoying to deal with. And he outpaces here because he's on his six cycle. Like, I think Cress just probably wins the game for Onion. Because he forces the ult to double debuff itself. Yeah, that's just doing no damage. Yep, and then he just wins it with Cress. Because his crest is on Moonblast. Vig just... In the zeros, it's really painful to be a Vigoroth. It's really painful to be a Vigoroth. Like, if Vig has a shield, it can do better, but... Two Moonblasts don't quite knock out, but it looks like with, with the Psycho Cuts, they can. to live a moon blast. Ooh, that's fair. I don't I don't be running a lot of Altaria, so I'm not super comfortable I'm not super comfortable with that damage calcs in that matchup. He throws instantly here, which is a surprise to me. He's banking on a moon blast knocking out Bob by throwing what he did. Yeah. He's very much banking on a moon blast knocking out here. I'm a little surprised Snowman didn't Moonblast. And fish for a debuff. Moonblast. Does KO. And Onion. To day two. The American Invasion. The American Invasion chat. Ooh, Zizwilis. Another regional champion. Elia, Shadow Gligar, Dugong, Vigoroth, Shadow Waste Cash, and Charger Bug. Let's see what ZZ's running. ZZ, I want to see at least one electric type. Oh, well, there's a Lantern, a Guzzlord, a Shadow Obama Snow, Shadow Gligar, Talonflame, and Annihilate. No Magnezone, which is a bit of a surprise. Yo, what's up, Juiced? What's up, kids? Welcome in. But he is bringing back the Talonflame. Nah, Mithril. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he, he he was the Barcelona regional champion to start the season. And top eight in Dortmund. And and this is Gen Genier who uh, took down Rise earlier. Talon into Gly. Talon wins ones, Gly wins zeros and twos. Yo, what's up, Drewski? Oh yeah, uh, uh, this is how we live. This is Jongus' brother. This is Jongus' brother, Aziz Wireless. So Genjineer is clearly going to double shield for Switch here. The Talon moveset is a uh, Flame Charge Fly. It's a standard. Yeah, he was previously on a Brave Bird Fly. Interesting, he's flame charging again. He should be able to shield this, do one, and then the ace will KO. Yeah, you can't risk two and have a plus two incinerate knockout, but I believe according to Sims, this should knock out. Oh, it just didn't! And not getting switched there is huge! He competed once a while ago. 
He, uh, he's done some unofficial. Oh, they discharge catch out of the Obama snow. Uh, it's locked in for the whole weekend. Oh, the discharge catch out of the Obama snow is filthy. But yeah, he has done some like watch parties and stuff, but he hasn't officially casted. No. I think Brave Bird is just worse. There's some really specific anti whizcash tech with Brave Bird, but I think in Great League that it is in in Great League it is strictly better to have Night Slash and Shadow. Sorry, uh, I'm looking at the Annihilate. It, it, it's strictly better to have uh, Flame Charge Fly because the uh, Flame Charge Fly Fly three two two pacing is just so elite. Bird is better DPE, but it's about the pacing on fly. This draw run does a lot, but it doesn't knock out here. Like, he survives it like, yeah. Junkers made top three once, got you. Yeah, because he, he competed at one point, but he hasn't competed this cycle, I don't believe. He hasn't competed this season, but yeah. He, he, had, some pretty, he had some pretty good performances. So we got, oh, not lock-ins for game number two. That's a replay. But yeah, ZZ up one to zero. Next win for him means a trip to day two and top cut. Oh, Baba Snow into the Shadow Gligar. Disaster for Genjineer. Same switching into the Dugong. Answered with the Annihilate. Hold on, though. This is an ABB team by Genjineer. He's setting up the Vigoroth to try and sweep. And Vigoroth can do just that. This is looking very good for Genjineer. This is looking very, very good for Genjineer to win this game. He hard lost lead and swap. He tanks the move. He gets countered down. But he gets energy on Gligar. He can pressure a shield off the Obama Snow. Oh, he gets the Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball doesn't knock out, though. You can survive this. Yup, he tanks it. This forces ZZ to bring in Talon. He can't bring in the Obama Snow here. Oh, the one turn wait! He ends up throwing out alignment! Two is supposed to be good, but he waited the turn to see what came in. And he gives him an incinerate for free. Oh, disaster strikes for Genjineer. You can't give Talon for him 20 free energy and expect to win the game. As ZZ is going to start ramping up his damage with the flame charge. And this is suddenly looking... Giving that incinerate gives new life to ZZ as he tries to fight back in this game. And this is the pacing that we were talking about. The flame charge fly fly. Three to the first, but two, two to the second. You find yourself outpacing so many Pokemon. And the difference right here is the snuck incinerate. If not for the snug incinerate... Yeah, that's the difference right there as Talon completely sweeps the endgame. Gligar, everything loses to Talonflame there. And that's where the good timing, I mean, you can ask about it with the judge, but he, he waited the turn. So that shouldn't be a reviewable thing. And they're not going to review it. Okay, that's good. He waited the turn and then did two. That was unfortunate. Yo, Nighttime Clasher! Uh, Alec, I actually am a commentator for these regionals. I casted the Portland regionals and I casted the Charlotte regionals. I don't think I'm on any more this season, but... 
I am an official caster. So they will periodically tell me, yo, Henry, get on an airplane. And I go, yes, sir, Mr. Pokemon Company International. And then I get to cast up. Nighttime Clasher, let's go. Versus Pablo Dinas. Well, Zoe is there as a host. Zoe's there as a host, which is honestly really good. I am not gonna be I'm not gonna be casting a world, no. I didn't earn it this season. I didn't earn it this season. Nighttime, Talon, Obama with Icy Wind, Charge a Bug, Azu, Shadow Cash, and Annihilate. Yo, what's up, Kobe? Maybe next year. I uh, didn't cast enough this season to earn it. Yeah, uh, Zoe's there as a host to, like, interview people and stuff like that. Yeah, Pablo as Licky, Charger, Vigoroth, Gligar, Lantern, Altaria. Yo, with some graphics. Oh, it honestly has been. We have over 550 people in chat right now. Wild. If you're enjoying it, don't forget to hit that like button. It's free. And I think it helps recommend the stream. So. Which is good. Um, I'm not 100% sure, Josh. I have a planned honeymoon to Hawaii, but I haven't scheduled a date yet, so I might just schedule it for when Worlds happens and then just go to Worlds as a human being instead of... <laughs> because I, I haven't got on my honeymoon yet. But yeah, Nighttime Clash here, Token Tomorrow Enthusiast, Liverpool Regional Champion, Peoria Top 8, Pittsburgh Top 8, and NAIC Top 16. And Pablo, unfortunately, if you guys remember that uh, Giratina, that uh, Giratina 17-0 um, run by Inadequance, that was against Pablo Dinas in uh, Grand. So Pablo looking for some revenge. Talon into Gligar. Yeah, he hit the CMP sack swap, yes. Hold on, I'm gonna go back for a second. I wanna look at Nighttime's movesets. Sorry for going back, chat. Okay, he is Night Slash Shadow Ball. I wanted to make sure he wasn't on close combat. I wanted to make sure he wasn't on a close combat. All right, Talon into Shadow Gligar. This will be interesting in the back. The charger bug is very awkward. He flies here. This is... Sorry. Wrong, wrong screen. He goes to the area lace. <laughs> he goes to the area lace. Nighttime knows better than to fly first. If you're in this matchup as the talent and you fly first, jail time. Jail time. <laughs> It looks like if you double flame charge, you might be able to win the twos. But if you flame charge... Or, at the very least, ZZ had a super high rank talent. Ooh, he catches on a Liga Dunk. You don't fly first because it's 3-2-2 two, two, whether you go triple fly or flame charge fly fly, so why wouldn't you boost your attack? And now he can do two more incinerates here and rebank. Oh, he goes Obama! Interesting! Bro, he saves the energy on the Talon, which is good. What's up, Henry? Uh, nothing was caught, but he should be able to farm up to back to back here. Okay, one off back to back. Because this, and he can live a wing attack from the, so he will get an icy wind on whatever's in back, and it's the charge bug. Oh no, Keontra, that's pain, homie. Oh, these old switches do nothing. He gets there! Oh, a Baba Snow! He can... 
all. I was going to say that does actually KO. He just brings in the ape. Oh, ho, ho, the switch into the talon. He's going for the fly. Pablo has to shield to win the game. But I still don't think he can. Because the Annihilate should be able to counter down and win charge attack priority over the... Um... Yeah, because this, this doesn't knock out. This doesn't knock out. Yeah, uh, Pablo was second at a Utrecht. Yeah, it doesn't KO. And he gets the counter down! Oh, well played by Nighttime. Well played by Nighttime, man. Well played by Nighttime. I have played enough Annihilate. Yeah, there's a Snorlax in my house, and it's extra, extra large. Yo, let's go. Oh, that's huge. Literally. And check, because I know leagues change today. I'm going to have a... A pretty hype, a pretty hype, uh, Jungle Cup team for y'all that I'm going to post after this stream that doesn't have Vigoroth, but looks to be extremely flexible. A rare, no Vigoroth Jungle Cup team. Alright. Yeah. Not, nighttime's real good at what he does. Gotta watch it to build a counter to it. Oh! Tries for the catch out of the Annihilate! And Nighttime's just getting completely hard countered in this game, bro. Nighttime's just getting completely hard countered in this game. There's Whizcash and Altaria in the back. Unless Nighttime's able to pull some... Oh, he gets the Shadow Ball. I mean, but it doesn't KO. It doesn't KO. This does set up a Obama Snow farm. But the moment he switches out of the Obama Snow into the Whizcash, he loses the game. There's just a strict pacing advantage for a charger bug here. Yeah, he's at back to back. This game's done. There isn't a way forward for nighttime. I'm not gonna lie, wet when we see cash on the alt, we might see uh he gets a catch. But dude, alt is farming him for sport. Alt is farming him for sport, bro. Yeah, ult is farming him for sport. He's gonna try like hell to leverage Obama Snow energy, but oh, man, this is. He gets the debuff. That's step one. That's step one. That's step one. Yo, Drewski with the five. Thank you so much for supporting the content. I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate this more. Another debuff. Hold on. Can he get another scald? He does get another scald. It keeps debuffing. Pablo has to give up a shield. It's debuffed. I think you have to let this go. He shields. But clock's up. He can just switch. And the catch. Yeah. An undercharge attempt on the icy. But Altaria has the move. It's over. Yeah, GG's. It was double debuffed. I think he had to try and let it go. But it was going to be a really uphill battle no matter what. Yeah, like, it was basically just hard counter city. Two very good catches in that game. 
Come on, nighttime. He's already won one EU regional this season. Can he win a second one and take it home for uh, the good old boys in red, white, and blue? Oh, Shadow is cashing a charger. This matchup is a lot worse as, as the Shadow. Oh, sends it Licky, sends in a bomber. But, oh no, the Gligar in the back. Oh, this is going to be a really interesting game. Yeah, it's 320 people. So there's a lot of, a lot, a lot of like new faces, old faces, stuff like that. But yeah, Obama Snow here. Just going to be firing off these icy Living winds. for the bedhead hair streams. SSJ2 vibes lol. He's reading that it's Vigoroth in the back, but it's not Vigoroth in the back. So nighttime is is saving his ape for a Vigoroth that isn't there. Yeah, Sebastian, I'm playing copyright free music. Yeah, Icy Wind is super important for this matchup, but being down energy means that Licky, like, you win all evens because you win charge stack priority, but Licky's up energy. Does this set up like a massive farm for the Obama though? I don't think it does. I don't think he can get this farm down. Like, you can't really switch in an Obama Snow to an energy lead, Licky. Yeah, he's just too low. This is actually bad for nighttime. Instead of just bringing in the hard counter, he brought in the Obama because he's he's reading. Does he reposition here? He does not. This is so tough for nighttime. Yeah, this should just be a win for Pablo. Uh, we're typically told a, a couple months beforehand. I was brought on mid-season though, so I'm not part of the full rotation just yet. Yeah, Gligar up a shield just wins this game completely. And it's the simultaneous switch. Yeah. It sucks that there's not a path forward here. Nah, she's... She's like, it was actually her idea because, oh, the boost. Uh, believe it or not, Scott, uh, it was actually her idea. Yeah, she is. <sighs> but there's just no way to get the Gligar out of the sky, man. There's just no way to get the Gligar out of the sky. He just mud bombs and zero bubbles. He knows it's over. Ah, Pablo getting some revenge for a Team Europe here. Yeah, nighttime was uh, seeing ghosts of Vigoroth in the back, but sadly there wasn't one. All right, ooh, Palasha. First Icelandic Lapras. Yo, I Icelandic Lapras, I'm pretty sure, is a Discord homie. He is a Discord homie, yeah. So we have another Discord homie versus Palasha, who has Shadow Magnezone. But her team, Cresselia, Annihilate, Shadow Whiskash, Shadow Magnezone, Skarmory, and Altaria. And Icelandic Lapras has Shadow Cash. The Annihilate, the Cresselia, the Mandibuzz, the Chargebug, and the Lickitung. This team is really susceptible to Magnezone's energy. This team is real, like... Th there's an ape and there's a whiz cash. If y'all watch the me verse versus Axon video, y'all know Shadow Wild Charge, two shots, Shadow Whiz Cash. Like she, I would say, has a pretty clear argument to be the best female battler in the entire world. And 
and just one of the best battlers in the world in general. This this Magnezone is going to be really tough to deal with. It's going to be a big problem. 4.8 magnitude earthquake, dang. Icelandic Lapras, Future Sight Chrysalia, Ice Punch Ape, interesting. Dark Pulse on Mandy. Palasha team. Pretty standard. Michelle Wild Charge. That's supposed to be Night Slash. Uh, they just typed Night S and then it auto filled Night Shade. But yeah, it's Night Slash. And Future Psych Cresselia as well. Yo, what's up, Jai? All right, Lickitung into Altaria on the lead. Ficked called the lead. Just lead Altaria every game. Yeah, Shadow Zone, if you actually bring it, is really good, but it's also insanely good bench pressure. It's insanely good bench pressure. Oh, that is... that. That's pain, Corey. I've definitely... Been there before, which takes ages. I tried to build a polyrath and it took like 20 TMs and I was so mad. <laughs> Typically, alt can barely win zeros here. A lot of the American players are a part of like a team. I forget what the team's actually called, but because they changed the name. But yeah, so they they have jerseys. Manda Buzz pivoting into a Night Slash Annihilate is very interesting. So she she pivots Night Slash Ape because Mandy Farm is too rough for for this backline because Mandy also crushes cash. But now the ape kind of gets thrown away this is an interesting pivot but she was in a very 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 bad position and kind of had to make a business decision mandy has no fast move pressure here but she has no charge move pressure so it's very awkward for everyone involved another night slash bait She's a shadow cash in the back. I think uh, whether she shields or not, it, it's a loss. But yeah, M Mandibuzz energy in the back was basically just saying, and the snipe, and that's game. Yep, it is instantly over on the spot. No amount of debuffs can save, can save Palasha here. No amount of debuffs save Palasha here. This is over. Game one to Icelandic Lapras. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, and and she is well aware, but this almost, almost a little bit forces her hand to bring the Magnezone, or potentially to to bring the Skarm because Skarm can do well there. But it basically forces the hand to bring a Steel type. So he can just run, he can just try and run super strong into a steal. The Lapras plushie is goaded. Let's go. All right. I do want to see, like, I very much believe in zone, and the fact that she's gotten this far with it, like, I very much believe in zone. Uh, if you're doing that, you're gonna need a lot of bulk to pair with it. Ooh, Shadow Cash into Annihilate. This time, she does bring the Skarmory. Backlines favor Palasha. 
No Night Slash here for Icelandic Lapras means that he doesn't have the pacing advantage that Annihilate typically prefers in this matchup. Like, Versus Cash is one of the reasons why Night Slash is so nice. Gets the debuff. No bait. Full sending the Shadow Ball. I, I don't know, Tricky. I don't know. She gets the shield call right as well. Ooh! Catches the debuffed Ice Punch out of Skarmory. Lantern and Greedent? I can honestly see that, yeah. Sends in the Manda Buzz. Yeah, oh, like Reggie Gira A. Yeah, like you need an amount of bulk that the world has never seen before. You need so much bulk. So he feels pretty comfortable with having one Mon that beats Zone, Licky, and then a Mon weak to Zone. But Licky is not super comfy in his own. Lands the bird. Letting it go. This is a bit awkward. Buzz wins. Sorry, uh, Buzz loses charge tech priority there. I misspoke. Scald. That's that shadow difference right there. Is it actually KOs? In comes the Licky. Oh, she gets the Scald. Oh, the catch! What a beautiful catch by Icelandic Lapras. Oh, that was beautiful. What a perfect use of the 1 HP Annihilate. But now it's Licky to ult in the ones. Licky has a sizable energy head start, though. Can Licky do this? That was a beautiful, beautiful catch by Icelandic Lapras there. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh, it's been insane, Matthew. The uh, play so far have been unreal. Shielding up the sky attack. She now has to try and get to a Moonblast. Lock not up. Interesting. She goes for a sky attack. This, this this doesn't KO, but it does get her. I think she would have got farmed down before she made the blast, so she has to try for it. Ah, yeah. Icelandic Lapras, the Discord homie. Advancing to day two, Palasha will have another opportunity in the loser's bracket. We are starting to get closer to live. We started like f uh, four ish hours after them, and we're getting. Yo, what's up, Tamagotcha? We have uh, Christian ZZ versus Gioppi. Another Claude. Interesting. Press, Skarm, Lantern, Claude, Guzzlord, and Annihilate. He RPSC the other day, but I'll still root for him. And then, yo. I'm gonna message Icelandic Lapras real quick. Congrats on day two. Mud Bomb instead of Skull against the ape. And Christian has a Trevenant. We've seen a couple Trevenants today, which is very interesting.
Yeah. Trev is interesting. Trev is interesting. We take a look at this team. I mean, Trev cooks. Trev has play into five of six. Trev has play into five. Yeah, and Banana Bread Dodge just said the same thing. Yeah. Ultra Premier Cup. I wish I could have played it more. At my ELO range, I couldn't really get cues. So I don't feel like I got a good read on it. And then, yep. Pretty standard across the board. If you don't like the music trainer, there are other streams. I'm playing copyright free so that viewers themselves will be able to watch it back after the fact. It won't get copyright claimed. This is strictly for viewers, so if they have to do stuff, they'll be able to watch it back after the fact. <laughs> but what a lead for Christian here. He has to save switch to Skarmory, and Tree can stay in here. And yeah, he literally just ran it with two things that be Guzzlord. Uh, because it's the most accessible lead, OGO. He shields it. He goes Dugong. Potentially flippable for Giappi. Potentially flippable for, for Giappi here. Christian is going to let it go. I believe Christian's done well at regionals before. Hold on. So Christian previously was fifth at Barcelona. That's where it was from. That's where it was from. It would undercharge by Christian after the Brave Bird. That's a nice undercharge. Doesn't let Giappi flip it. UOP on this. Oh, the, the, they're actually queues in the 2900s now? That's hype. When I started the week, I was in and around that range, and I've stayed in that range, and I've been just. I couldn't really find ultra queues too much, so that's why I've been playing OGO. And the simul switch, big into Guz. He knows he has to bring Guz every game. Honestly, next game, if you're Christian, do you just run ABA strong to Guz? Just have like Vig Dugong ABA and just say that he won't bring the Annihilate. Yeah, and this slam landing means it's over. It's over. I need to get some coffee, man. I'm going to have to put in a... Because obviously I am here. I am not able to just be like i'm gonna go make lunch because i'm streaming so i think i'm probably gonna order some like a coffee and a bagel for my lunch here shortly why wow, hey, yes sir i will give you a, a full screen look at the luscious locks oh look at them look at them they're beautiful chat they're beautiful <laughs> I've had so many people comment on it, so it's like, all right, fine. <laughs> Jimmy John's, you see, I don't know if that's good food to eat on stream, though, because that is like... That is like... Jimmy John's will often have a lot of mayo on it, right? And mayo is just going to, like, get all over my headset. And stuff. Like, it's good, but I don't think it's stream food. I don't think it's stream food. Ah, it's going well, Dennis. Thanks for asking, man. Welcome in. Happy Friday. Also, happy Friday to everyone on chat. Yeah, it is. Like, that is one thing is, is like, you got to be mad careful about what you get because you can't have it just be like, like, it has to be a very contained food. It has to be very contained food. 
All right, yo, Gly and a lantern. This is kind of an awkward matchup for all involved. If you successfully bait with an ace, it's charge attack priority dig to the second serve. Um, if I do lunch, I would just do it on stream. So I would just order something and then just eat on stream. Harrison <laughs> just says, meatball sub, let's go. Yes, the uh, the uh, peak of, of stream food would definitely be a meatball sub. Shielding a dig tilts the matchup firmly into Joppy's favor. Because he can always outpace. He can always outpace. Pooj is cooking though. Jersey Mike's be hidden, but they have a lot of dressing on that. So, cause, oh, shielding the ace bait. And it's charged attack priority. And that's where a well-executed ace bait in this matchup can be devastating. Because now the dig lands, he's stuck throwing the move instead of farming down and Christian will always let this go. Christian will always let this go. A rack of rip, bro. I'll have to clean off the uh, side of the desk that, that's over here and just have a rack of ribs. Holy. Only a surf? It's not... Well, it's a very awkward game because if you're able to successfully bait, it puts you on a really good footing. If you're able to not successfully bait, it, you're in trouble. Uh, yes, Tiger, that's the plan. It's still... Uh, I'm pretty sure it's still going live. So we are catching up to live. Yeah, it is still going live. Like, it's a 320-person tournament. So they're going to have endless games to show. <laughs> no. This should be Joppy's game to win. It is three days, so they have a championship, like, the final thing is on Sunday. He actually does get to the- Oh, the catch on the lantern! That's kind of a wicked catch! Guz gets all the farm it could ever ask for, though, so it doesn't save him. But that's a wicked catch. That's a wicked catch. That's a wicked catch. I mean, it doesn't win him the game. Uh, correct, Tiger, yes, so... They do day one today, day two tomorrow, up until losers and grands. And they do losers and grands in day two. Ooh, the undercharge by Joppy. He knows he needs energy here. And he's gonna get it. That's a nice undercharge. Guaranteeing this claw damage is big. Christian, however, can under tap and be at the icy wind and the scarm is really low. He should have committed to a crunch. By not committing to a crunch here, he may have just cost himself this game. It'll be ice shard versus steel wing in the end game. This will be close. In comes the Scarberry. Scarberry gets the farm down with a fraction of HP. Joppy with the equalizer. And we're going to a game three, folks. We're going to a game three. <laughs> oh, wow. That end game, the tiniest of margins on the health bar. But Joppy gets his equalizer there. Christian benched the Trevenant in game two. Does he bring it back in game number three? Do you bring back the tree is the question. And can it dodge the Guzzlord if it does? Tree into Skarmory. I believe Trev wins twos here. Oh, but the Annihilate in the back. The Annihilate in the back. He has no way of baiting it out without inadvertently. Oh, this is, this is suddenly looking rough for Christian. He has no way of baiting it out without inadvertently realigning the Trev onto the Guzzlord. This is Joppy's game to lose. In the twos, Trev wins it, but look at the steel wings that have already happened here. The thing is, the Guzzlord has nowhere to go, but the Annihilate is so good in the back. 
Joppy double shields. He will be able to steel wing this into a punchable range for this Annihilate. And there is the pivot into the Dugong, baiting out the Annihilate. But what this does is this puts Trev onto the Gus, but he threw Trev's energy. So Trev's energy, like he has no more energy on Trev. So he got value out of the energy and now he's baiting it out to try and let Vigoroth sweep in this end game. He has the ball here and does. That's a good call by Joppy. Christian, I imagine, will no shield here. Just, oh, he shields! Calling that it's the shadow ball. And he's going to be able to force the final shield back. Oh, there is no shield. I stand corrected. For some reason, I thought he had a shield. That, that changes. Oh, because he double shielded the Skarmory. So that's why he shields. Because he can win switch. Sorry, I'm tired. I've been doing this for three hours. I thought the Joppy still had a shield, but doing this allows him to win switch and we avoid the Guzzlord and Trev problem that was going to happen. So he gets the shield call right, wins alignment, and now it's big into Guzz. Sends in the Skarm. Skarm can overfarm a lot. Can't farm down. But energy here is going to be a problem. Joppy has a lot of it. He sends in the Vig. Vig is just going to get Brave Bird and he waits the turn. Skarm energy. Christian won swap, but Skarm energy is just completely ruining him at this point. He can make it to a rock slide, but I believe Trev is close to dry. Which means that Trev can't outpace here. And Rockslide doesn't knock out. In comes the Trev. It's completely dry and Joppy's gonna take it. Joppy's gonna take it. Okay. In hindsight, should have brought in the tree there. Yeah, but I think either way, it's still gonna be a loss. Because he can over farm a lot versus the tree. If he brings in the tree, he can still throw like four or five steel wings and the move, and he still gets a bird onto the Vigoroth. So either way, he was cooked. He was so weak, the tree, but he's able to pull it off. He's able to pull it off. We have Stone Collection, one of Europe's best versus Donne. Setting in the tree probably would have been better, but I think we end in I think we end in the same result. I think we end in the same result. Like it would have been the the better play, but I still think it ends with it getting birded. But yeah, stone collection, an absurdly decorated trainer here. Stone collection. We go here. He is constantly top cutting. He had ninth at Malmo, ninth at Torino, fifth at Gdansk, fifth at Stuttgart, seventh at Liverpool, ninth at Dortmund, and 17th at Utrecht. And he's running his, at this point, signature Shadow Sableye. I'm going to take a brief pause. I'm going to refill my water chat. It's been three hours, so I'm going to refill my water. I'll be back in 60 seconds, chat. I'll be back in 60 seconds. All right. So if y'all need a reef of water, y'all can do it too. All right, we're so back. We're so back. Okay. Well, if the ad played while I was gone, then that's good. <laughs> that's like, you would rather have an ad play when nothing is happening. So, all right. Shadow Sableye, Shadow Waste Cash, Azumarill, Vigoroth, Charge Bug, and Skarmory. Play it, please. 
And Donne with the Umbreon. I should think the Umbreon's a good pick here. Shadow is cash. Pelipper. We haven't seen a Pelipper in ages. Shadow, Alolan Sand Slash with Shadow Claw. And then Standard for the Shadow Gligar and the Charge Above. The Umbreon is interesting. Chair was giving insightful wisdom. I missed it because of it. Uh, people like Shadow Sableye because it is better into Skarmory than the, than the regular Sableye. Like, if you land a foul play, I believe you have the ability to, like, farm down after. And for the increase in fire, like, having power gem can be nice. But the, the main thing I heard people talk about was the Skarm matchup. We have Stone Collection versus Donna in Group K. Kelly's flying damage is, is just too expensive. I mean, Purified Sableye is still a beast. It's still a beast. But also, considering that on the Go Battle League ladder, so many teams have Wigglytuff, it's hard to run Sableye at all in Go Battle League. Specifically. Like, the uh, Shadow Sable turn is more just for the Show 6 metas. We're getting them locked in. Ooh, Shadow Gligar into Shadow Whiskash. Somehow, I don't like being either Pokemon in this matchup. It's crazy. I don't know if y'all in chat feel like this. Uh, let me know if you do. I don't feel comfortable if I'm the Gligar, and I don't feel comfortable if I'm the Whiskash. <laughs> I don't know how that's possible, but I don't feel comfortable with either one. Oh, we see a catch onto the Charger Bug. Interesting. Like, either side of it that I'm on, I'm like, bro, I don't want to be here. <laughs> Alright, we're so back. Uh, he's scalding, expecting a shield. The Mudbomb would have KO'd, but he wants a debuff here. He wants a debuff. Doesn't get it. Holly into D Knight. I've discovered that I strictly prefer to be the uh, Polyrath. Now that I figured out how to play it, I strictly prefer to be the Polyrath because I run non-shadow Poly. Does he get there? Oh, he does! So he forces charge stack priority on one HP. Donna can't shield because it would KO through the shield. Because, fun fact, if you didn't know, a shielded charge attack does exactly one HP of damage. So if you have one HP left and you shield, it will KO you through the shield and use the shield. So that's why Donna can't shield there. Brings in Peli. Peli lives a rock slide, so two body slams is better. Because two slams should knock out here. Oh, and he has Glide. It's Azu in the back. Yeah, Stone Collection should have this. I'm 27, Fles. I'm 27. Yep, in comes the Azumarill. Goes to the Hurricane. He saves the big. Oh, that's interesting. You're just letting your Gligar die here. Huh. Yeah, Stone just can't let can't let the Peli get too much farm. He he has a move on big though, so he should be good. He forces that energy, and then he can just win with Figaroth. 
Vigoroth should have a body slam bank. He had back to back and didn't throw the second one, I believe. Oh, he did throw his move. Never mind. But he can outpace. He's good. He's good. All right. Game one win. Stone collection. An ancient. Nah. 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 Twilight Princess. Nah. Not like this. Not like this. I have a family. You can't be calling me ancient. <laughs> Uh, the battles have been absurdly good. It's a 320 player tournament. The fact that they have a group K, we have never seen a Go tournament with a group K before, bro. Ooh, this matchup is weirdly unfun as the Vigoroth. I believe Vigoroth wins ones, triple body slam. I think Charger wins twos. I think Charger wins twos. But the awkward thing is you can't counter it into a rock side range, but I believe Charger wins twos here. I am married, Kishab, yes. Yeah, so if you shield once, you you win one straight body slam, and Stone knows that that, that matchup knowledge. So he's fine with shielding once, because as you see here, he's going to be able to, to double up on body slams, basically. Like, he is one in the move away. Unless Donna wants to double shield, Donna's not going to shield here. So Donna's just going to let this go, and then Stone can counter down. Yep. That's a matchup that I researched, because I was running Vigoroth. <laughs> Pelly is interesting because he'll be hit with a rock slide. I guess he can shield it if he wants to. It does. But Stone has charge up. And it's going to be a cash battle in the back. But importantly, Donna is going to have the energy advantage here. Donna has the energy advantage. So Donna gets the first shot at that 50 50 skull debuff. It's the same thing with, um... Ooh, gets the debuff. Now Donna's gonna let this go. A debuff as well. I think you want to double mud bomb here. I think this is a misplay by Donna. Unless with the debuff, two mud bombs don't KO, but I have to imagine two mud bombs. He's at back to back. He's at back to back. He just lets it go. He knows he needs energy on, on Pelipper to win the game. But I mean, Shadow Scald, it's resisted, but it, it, it adds up here. It definitely adds up. Clocks up, in comes the Charger Bug, and a Hurricane doesn't knock out here. A hurricane will take him close to the red health, but he should be still in the yellow after this hurricane lands. Yeah. And then the volt switches just tear Pelipper to shreds. And Stone takes it. Stone takes it. Yeah, like these uh, little intricacies like the matchup knowledge there. It's so like, it's what separates a lot of these players is their ability to have all these shielding scenarios as something that they know. Jamie McElwain for Scafo. Oh, this is going to be a great game. Oh, Shadow Gator sighting, Jet. Shadow Gator sighting. Let's go. Oh, that's hype. Scafo is an unbelievably talented trainer. Seventh at, at Utrecht. Ninth at Stuttgart. Fifth at Worlds last year. 5th at EUIC, 7th at Bremen, 9th at 2023 Stuttgart. Unbelievably talented trainer. Jamie McElwain, I believe, is a newer competitor, but burst onto the scene in a big way. So, oh, I actually stand corrected. So, he, he has competed before in the past. He was 17th at Last Chance Qualifiers, 33rd at Liverpool, 13th at Liverpool 2024, and then had a bit of a rough go of it at Utrecht with a Quagsire. But Shadow Gator... This team has a lot of good anti-gator tech, though. 
This team has a lot of good anti-gator tech. This is going to be a difficult uh, matchup for, for Scafo. Shadow Cash looks amazing for him, but outside of that, a lot of the stuff that he would want to use is very difficult to use in this matchup. All right, let's take a look. Quickly tough standard. He's on crunch on the gator. He's on crunch. So better into lantern, but a lot worse into the mandibuzz. He's on crunch on the gator. And Jamie Moonblast Cresselia, Night Slash Annihilate, Powder Snow, Shadow Alolan Sand Slash, and Mudshot Stone Edge on Claude. Claude will always have EQ, but the other two moves. Oh, Shadow Alolan Sand Slash into the gator. Okay. The gator finds its target in a huge way, and Jamie Red's so weak to it. Jamie Red triple weak to Gator. Oh my word. This is about to be a slaughter. This is about to be an absolute for alligator slaughter here. He read triple weak. Scafo brought it. Scafo can shield because he always outpaces here. And these Shadow Claws will get it closer and closer to Hydro Cannon range. He gets a catch onto the Cresselia, but he has Charge a Bug for this. He can just rebank his energy and go charge a bug. He can also just go for a crunch and knock it out. Doesn't go for the crunch, instead just sends in charge it, but he already got it into a range where one X scissor will KO. This is just... <laughs> Let's go! Oh! For alligator cooking! They said it couldn't be done. They said it was trash in... In show six, Scafo says, no, 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 it's good, it's good. All right, chat, I'm going to pause this for a second. How, how do you beat this for alligator? It's a trick question. You don't beat the for alligator. <laughs> it's still on like 60% HP and it has six shadow claws head start. You don't beat it. Fast moves, I mean, you have a counter and you have counter and powder snow and it's getting to two moves versus anything you have. He's shielding. Oh no, he plays to a CMP tie that he does not win. As Scafo, Scafo can survive four counters, so he'll he'll get to the hydro here. But does he live five? Oh, he does! <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! As Phoenix said, Gator dragging him to the swamps, man. Oh, jeez. I did century, yeah. I can't can't blame uh, Kokshak for that, man. I can't blame him for that. That endgame was unwinnable, and he was very frustrated. He was very frustrated. I can't I can't blame him for that. Yeah, that was, that was a slaughter. That was an absolute slaughter, man. And even just getting CMP there would have been very good for him. But he wasn't able to get it. Yeah, he for sure has to bring Mandy Lantern this game. Because he got cooked by that gator, bro. He has to bring, like, Mandy Lantern. He leads Claude! <laughs> The Gator Disrespect will not be tolerated. Sends in Cress, but now he can just crunch it, dude. He can just crunch it. Crunch it, rebank, go Charger. Well, he's very clearly baiting out the Charger. He could just stay in and win it with the Gator. He's just gonna stay in and win it with the Gator, bro. 
Because it's very clearly a charge of bait out. It's very clearly a charge of bait out. I think Jamie overfarmed by one. So if he's five off, Scafo can CMP him with a hydro. Scafo can CMP him with a hydro. He's five off. Scafo CMPs him with a hydro, bro. Oh. <laughs> oh, he doesn't throw it. He's going for a two shield farm down. He's saying Gator energy versus the world. He he didn't see a B there. He wants energy. Oh my, oh, oh my God. How do you beat this for alligator, Chad? <laughs> How do you beat it? How do you beat it? He just has switch. He wins the game. In comes the mandibuzz. <laughs> Gator's just shaking his head like, you're not. You're not. Just quit, bro. Just quit. And then Wizcash claps Claude. Bro, politely, I need Scafo to win this tournament so I can make a video of Gator just clapping cheeks. Wait. Wait. I don't think this is over. This is not over. Oh no. This is not over, I don't think. Jamie wins. The Shadow Cash gets two shot. The regular doesn't. But it's the shadow cash! All that gator cooking just to lose! All that gator cooking just to lose! And that right there is why, personally, I was surprised when he didn't CMP the crest. Because he went down a shield and Claude just swept him. Yeah. That's where not CMPing the crest and double shielding and farming down cost him. That's really unfortunate, man. Oh, the Claude just completely cooked him. Oh, that hurts. That hurts. He read it was a beta, but went down a shield and shadow cash in the zeros. Ooh, lantern into alt. Let's see the back. Okay. The A slash is nowhere to run, but the crest is really good. The crest is really good. Here's the thing though. If he gets it out of the way, Gator is stupidly good into Jamie's team. He goes crest. Oh, to bait out the Gator. He baits out the gator, but this sets up alignment that, that he doesn't want. I imagine Scafo can double shield here and win twos. Yeah, uh, it turns out that uh, that it, it was actually Claude Zyre's swamp. I think by crunching here, Jamie makes another move. I think double hydro was the better play. Like this sets up a two shield farm down. But yeah, if he hydros there, Cause he's gonna have to double shield now. If he hydros, he could hydro again and CMP there. But the crunch, I mean, he gets a farm down with energy, but he's down two shields, which is a rough feeling. Yo, that's awesome, Derek. You're going as a spectator? Nice. That's hype, dude. The thing is, he, he can get his shield back from the lantern, right? But A slash could now potentially sweep him. A slash could potentially sweep him. He saves Gator energy. I like that play. I like that play. He saves Gator energy. I think Surf does a lot here though. Surf does a lot here. He saves Gator energy, pivots cash. He pivots sand slash. This is not, this is not um, Ice Punch range. So he has to go for the extra. But that's really good for Scafo. 
Scafo just has to try and get into Hydra range. He doubles up. Gator wins CMP though and does basically all of its HP. Like, he has a move, but... Oh, he didn't have it! But he CMPs the drill run. Oh, I thought he left with one banked. Oh, but it's CMP. He's good. He's good. Yep. And that's game. Gator cooking, man. I thought he banked it and swapped, but he was one off. But Jamie built up to double ice punch, not ice punch plus drill run. Gator cooking, man. Gator cooking. It's his swamp, chat. Bro, they are still going. They are still going. The mainstream. We are slowly catching up to them, but they're still going. Ooh, the rocket boss of competitive Pokemon, Lurgan Rocket. Going up against Damon Cash. Lurgan is another player who has consistently had extremely good performances. Lurgan, 9th at Utrecht, 13 at Dortmund, 4th at Liverpool, 17 at Gdansk, 2nd at Bochum, 2023. Claude just came to visit. Alright, Night Slash and Island, Dugong, Shadow Gligar, Lickitung. He has a god rank crest. Yeah, Cress, Cress is, Cress is Lurgan's boy. Yo, what's up, Icelandic Labyrinth? Hey, chat, can we get some claps in chat for Icelandic Labyrinth? I, uh, I, uh, we, uh, got to watch him earlier. He made day two at the biggest Pokemon Go, like, ch uh, championship ever. So can we get some claps in chat for Icelandic Labyrinth, please? Because good shit, dude. Let's go, man. That catch of the Scald on your 1 HP ape. I was hyped, man. That catch was beautiful. It is, Mark, yes. It was beautiful, man. Oh, it was so good. It was so, 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 so good. Oh, it was terrific. And then we have Damon Cash, regular Cash, Icy Wind of Bomb of Snow, Skarmory, Lantern, Shadow Gligar, and another Night Slash Annihilator. But yeah, against a ferocious competitor as well. Well done, man. Well done. We have had a lot of homies make day two. Ooh, good lead for Damon. This matchup right here is why Damon is on Icy Wind chat. Icy Wind to Bomb of Snow into Lickitung. You win all evens, straight Icy Wind. So this is why Damon is, is running Icy Wind instead of Weather Ball. Because Icy Wind allows you to dictate switch advantage in this particular matchup, which we know Lickitung is everywhere. Yo, what's up, Tina? Happy Friday. So for Damon, he's very happy to see this here because Obama still wins charge attack priority, so even if Lurgan tries to CMP, it doesn't help him. But Damon can just dictate switch advantage in this game. And he's running Obama with the most switch dependent core in the game, the Skarmory and the Whiskash. However, Lurgan's backline does not care about switch in this game, which is very interesting. He has Dugong and Annihilate, both of which are very fine into Damon's backline. Yo. A Dugong Ice, Ice Shard farm down here would be nice. And that's what he's going for! Yes! And because he gets three! Yep, he gets three. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. He takes no damage. And now, looking at the team if you're Lurgan, setting in Skarmory here means that it's either Cash or Gligar in the back. Neither Cash or Gligar in the back. But yeah, um... 
As Andrew says, Audino can nest this season, and it's 2,100 dust per catch. It's goaded. I had an Audino nest, and I kind of lived there for a week, and now I'm very close to... I'm like 4.75 mil dust. Audino nesting, and nests occur in, in like parks, and they rotate every two weeks on Wednesday evenings. So, nests are actually worth checking out to see what you have around you, because Audino nests are goaded. With that Brave Bird, that KOs. Lurgan always shields this in case it's a Brave Bird, because he can just debuff whatever's in the back. That KOs, yeah. And now, he gets debuffs for free on the cash. The thing is, Damon has two shields. So, Damon's saying, can I, with two shields, still sweep this? He pivots into the aim. Oh, you, you got a good rank Coma O from, from your daily spawn? Nice. Skull does not two-shot, but does get the debuff. And for Lurgan, he can consistently Night Slash here because Damon is just running out of HP. Um, I have a local Discord that some people post in, but, but, but a lot of the time, I just have to drive to the nest. Uh, we saw one with three Shadows, Northstar. That's been the most so far. for the Scald. But at minus one, a Mud Bomb will not KO the Dugong at his health range here. Dugong's too healthy. So Lurgan wins it. Lurgan wins it. But yeah, my local Discord just is a channel where if people see what a nest is, they can post, and that's helpful. And he just over farms. Yo, what's up, Jazz? Oh! <laughs> uh, I don't know if you guys... I don't know if you guys lip read, but I'm pretty sure he said, I thought there was still... Uh, I thought there was still a Skarmory. Yeah, he uh, overformed there because I'm pretty sure he, he didn't realize that the Ice Shard KO'd the Brave Bird. Caught a perfect Goomy. Yo, that's such a good get. And you traded for a perfect Volibee. Yo, you are cooking, man. Holy. But yeah... I think based on what he said there, he thought the Skarm was still alive on 1 HP, so that's why he overfarmed. Yo, what's up, Andre? Welcome in. But yeah, setting up Dugong with energy there was beautifully done. Ooh, Skarm into Lickitung. Good lead for Damon, but Lickitung, I believe, can win the ones, provided a bird doesn't land. Oh, man. If Damon gets energy advantage annihilate, it's over. So if Lurgan actually, oh man. Seeing the ways that this match plays out, this looks very difficult for Lurgan. Because if Lurgan has energy lead ape, Damon is forced to go cash, which then puts Dugong onto Damon's ape. But if Damon has energy lead ape, then Lurgan just loses. So, right off the bat, this is looking profoundly negative for Lurgan. There's a GBL catch. Yo, that's such a good get. Dang, that's awesome. This should... This will be close. I don't want to speculate one way or the other. Oh! Oh, the lick! Lurgan has to be running some specific tech for that. Oh my. But he brings in the ape. He brings in the ape. And this sets him up where it's... I mean, either way, even if he brings in Dugong, Damon can pivot ape and Lurgan still loses. So, I don't know what that, that licky is, but it's crazy. But either way, this still sets up Lurgan in a profoundly negative position where it it's still just losing like we kind of talked through the potential ways the game could go earlier on and either way it's still just a loss oh the ice switch you switch oh no lurgan 
Yeah, unfortunately, the the IVs are are all bad for him. Oga. So like you get the mons, but they're bad. <laughs> get there and he has 8 billion energy on this whisk cash Damon getting the equalizer there the yeah, Lurgan ran so 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 weak to that annihilate and got punished for it Typically is, but sometimes there are certain events, Alden, where the IV floor is. Game three, we got lock-ins. Ape into Lantern. Oh, that Obama Snow is going to be annoying in the back. And Lantern with zeros here. Catching on the Lickitung. Saving energy on the Ape is good, so that's a nice catch by Lurgan. But this should probably bait out the Obama Snow, and it does. He uh, made a mistake there. He was trying to throw one beforehand, but just misplayed. Yeah, because you always want to throw a book before the debuff can get applied. But this now, baiting that out, it sets up Dugong. It sets up Dugong very nicely versus the cash in the end game. Obama can overfarm massively here though and exit with a move. I'm surprised by that. I'm very surprised by that. Cause he's two off, but two counters KO. This is just free farm for Lurgan. On Flygon, honestly, I haven't looked at it too much to know which is better. But yeah, Damon could have overfarmed more there and built up to back to back and forced the energy. But now Damon's just in a strictly losing position. Calls the bait because a ball barely wouldn't KO. Como O at the end of the day is still probably going to be a Master Premier mod at best. But they're bringing back Master Premier, so that's kind of fun. And there's that dugong. There's that dugong. Damon will get two moves before a debuff is applied, but this is where Shadow Cash would be substantially better. If it's allowed, Ed John, it, it should, yes. But yeah, like the Shadow Cash would have already would have already had the Dugong basically in the red. With this debuff, the Mud Bomb not doesn't KO, so Lurgan's fine to let this through. Clock up, but not soon enough. He's gonna shield. He can. Oh, he's going for an undercharge here. Because he wants the ability to have a zero turn switch, if need be. He shields. In comes the lantern! Goes for the night slash. Night slash will leave it on like one HP here. I think it can barely hang on. It'll be very, very close. Now it KOs. 
now it chaos. Down goes Lantern. Cash has a move, but Lurgan has a shield. Yo, let's go Lost and Found. Hey, I'm uh, happy to hear uh, you were able to find a success with it. Nice. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, Lurgan advancing. Wait, just double check. Yeah, Group M. That's how big this tournament is. We're on a Group M, man. That's absolutely unreal. I, I want to look at the bracket. I haven't looked at the bracket in full, bro. How many? Hold on. I'm going to full screen this. Where, where's the cursor, bro? How many brackets are there, dude? All the way to a bracket P? <laughs> All the way to a bracket P? What is this tournament? There's a bracket P in this tournament. 320 competitors. 320 competitors. It is the largest Pokemon Go tournament in history. Yeah, it goes to Group P. Did you know that competitors like Pato Man and Caleb are at this tournament, but they're in Group P, so we haven't even seen them yet? How absurd is that? <laughs> There's some good-ass competitors in Group P, and we've seen none of them. <laughs> All Mohawks at this tournament, PvP Davids at this tournament, Galaxico Bolton, Ventuski, Colin. Axon, last I heard, was in the loser's side of the bracket. We haven't taken a look at a loser's at a loser side yet. We are getting through all the winners' battles, and then we'll take a look at the losers. Um, the bracket still has spoilers in it, so I can drop it, but it'll have spoilers for people. It's another Gator chat! It's another Gator! And that team is mad Gatorable. Bast, so for Young Quas, we have, hold on, go back. Basti, Mandy, Cash, Charja, Ape, Dugong, Dinoski, Vigoroth, Chargebug, Shadow Gator, Cresselia. Oh, it's Double Gator! With a a uh, the shadow for alligator and the uh, and the skeleturge and the guzzlord, let's go. Dinoski, by the way, chat was second at Stuttgart in this year, ninth at Utrecht, and fifth at 2022 Liverpool. So it's just a staggeringly, staggeringly talented, massive amount of battlers. Ice Punch and Iolape is interesting. Moonblast Crest, Ice Beam Gator, so no crunch. Brutal Swing on Guz. Yeah. Dinoski, congratulations. You are officially a Florida man. Yo, Eduardo, did, uh, did I actually do it right? Woo! Beating the dumbass American allegations. Let's go, baby. That, that That is all I could have ever asked for. That's all I could have ever asked for. <laughs> Yo, Cape Pine's in the house. Yo, chat. If y'all aren't watching Cape Pine videos, start. Hold on. Let me, let me grab a link to his stuff, man. His uh, breakdown of his D-Nair team, bro. Uh, Colin is in bracket P, so he's battling... But yeah, if you haven't checked out K-Pine yet, link down there. He makes good stuff. He will oftentimes post like, it's not daily posting, but he'll post like, this is a team that works and here's how to play it. Save switch Charger. In comes the Dirge. And we're, and Basti's gonna get Gatored, chat. Basti's gonna get Gatored. Very good charge attack timing by Young Quas. Am I an asshole if I say I didn't expect it because he had a Basti on his team? <laughs> Am I an asshole, chat? Am I an asshole? <laughs> oh, no. It's Axon is on the loser side of the bracket, but he's still in it. He's still in it. And I've run Basti fr from time to time. I just acknowledge that Basti takes zero skill to run. 
Like, I, I have run it before. I've posted videos on it. But it takes no skill to run. But I own that fact. It does take it t take no skill to run. But it's just when, when, when people say it takes skill to run, I ha just have to be like, no. As someone who who runs a lot of a lot of stuff and tries to compete at a high level, no. I'm sorry, it doesn't. It's just factually inaccurate. But that's why people like it, because it's a mon where you don't have like it either hard wins or hard loses. Basti did make a group finals. Doesn't mean I will stop my Basti slander. <laughs> and we're gonna see Basti versus Gator in this endgame here, man. And Gator will be able to land. Gator has to make four hydros here. Charge attack timing matters a lot here. Oh, he lets one through. He lets one through. No, Gianki, please. No, why are you giving him smackdowns, bro? Oh no, that's the thing you can't do. But charge attack timing when Amon has switched in is a very nuanced skill. Young Quats throws, which is arguably a misplay. He has to commit to farm here because that gives Dinoski a turn back. That gives Dinoski a turn back. If he lives two SmackDowns, Young Quats th uh, uh, potentially through this game. Because Basti's low. Oh, no! And that's the turn he gave back, man. That's the turn he gave back. By throwing his move. That's the turn he gave back. Gator Rampage, let's go! Um, For competitive, people typically prefer the Shadow Cash. But to be fair, if Dinoski doesn't throw an alignment, then that situation doesn't happen. So. Yeah, the uh, double gator strats were too wicked. Yo. Ape Dugong is a really fun core. It's a really fun core. Jason hit a very early legend with Ape Dugong Basti. And... It does, Rusty, but I can actually go back and explain why it is difficult. So as we go back in this game, I can kind of explain why it is difficult. Because as we go here, Basti is brought in here. Switch takes a turn, but he was waiting to see if what came in he wasn't just blind tapping which would make it so he should be two turns behind here yeah so throwing right here throwing right here is 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 perfect timing but he throws there and it's on alignment yeah so it, it oftentimes requires a lot of... When it first happens, you will be a little disjointed because the animations are not what you're used to. But it's about watching for it and trying to find, like... And trying to find a familiar spot to put you back on where you are in the cycle. So, yeah. He, uh... And Eduardo brings a very good point. He tried to time by the animation, yeah. It's, I will oftentimes not go by animation there. I will go off of turns because the animation, the animation can be deceiving sometimes, which is frustrating, but it's an inaccuracy that we have to, I guess, live with because they haven't fixed it. But especially on switch in situations, the animation can be a little deceiving, but it's something that I've been able to somewhat consistently get good at. It's very hard to explain how, because a lot of it is just pattern recognition, but for me, I go off of a lot of just pattern recognition for how to help, basically. As long... Also, yeah, rollout animation, it just straight up lies to people. 
That's awesome, Rusty, yeah, because all you can do is just try and get better over time. Also, the fact that we still have 543 people in here is madness. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Thank you for hanging out. Ooh, Gator into charge. Gator gets a move first, though. Interesting. He goes Vigo. Yeah. Goes Mandy. Oh, not like this. Not like this. No. I don't want to see Dirge on Basti, man. I don't want to see Dirge on Basti, dude. No, please. That's awesome, Bernie. Well, uh, when the stream ends, I will be dropping what I believe is a very strong... Ooh, a slight inaccuracy. Dinoski can force swap. Or shields. He lets it go. The rock slide. And he... Oh, he can't. He gets two aces. He can't force swap. Oh, no. He's double shielding, but he has another one. The pacing on Mandy. And you can see there, he's like... But he just loses. He just loses. He just loses. Oh, he lived it! He lived it! I didn't think he would live that! 1 HP! 1 HP! We actually do have a timing sheet in the Discord. In comes the Dirge. Oh! Okay! Hold on! That was actually really well done. So watch... Watch Dinoski's patience to not throw an incinerate here. He's, he, oh, that's so good. If he trapped him in the incinerate, he probably loses. But now he's not far behind on energy and Gator can land a hydro. That is insane patience from Dinoski there. That's insane patience. Hydro, shielded, Bastiodon, already being hit with another hydro. The pacing on Gator and not letting Young Quas get a massive three SmackDown energy advantage is paying massive dividends for Dinoski. He can Stone Edge, but Dinoski is shielding this every day of the week here. He's more than happy to try and just get more Hydro Cannons here. Switch timer not up for Young Quas. He is stuck in this matchup, and Dinoski can make two additional Hydros here. Hydro number one will get Basti deep into the red. The switch timer, not up for Young Quas. He would love to save the Bastion, but he can't. He's getting outpaced in the move by one singular turn. And that is the difference. He didn't let Basti get the energy head start. He outpaces due to his patience. And now all that's left is the Chargebug. And Chargebug is getting cooked for dinner by this Skeleton Dirge. Oh my. The Vigoroth living on one HP. Followed by the patience there by Dinoski. Dinoski makes the shadow ball. And that's going to be day two for Dinoski. What a game. What a series. That's two shadow for alligators in top cut, chat. That's two shadow for alligators in top cut. Gator is all about energy management. And by not giving Basti the three SmackDown head start, he gets four Hydros. Unbelievably gameplay by Dinoski there. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. Ooh, another Discord member, PvP David. An OG homie. Versus Ventuski. We're in group O, which is preposterous. <laughs> it did, Neo, yeah. Vigo IV is coming in clutch. PvP David, also on the Mandibuzz hype train. Ventuski was a Sylph World Champion many times over. I believe at least once. Uh, exclamation point Discord should pull it up for you, Drewski. So PvP David versus Ventuski is going to be just an insane matchup. David it has been number one in the world on the global leaderboard several times over. And Ventuski is a former Sylph World Champion. This is just unbelievable. Uh, yeah, Neo, uh, this is a 320-person tournament. They're, they go to Group P. Again, as a reminder, there is a kid battling. If you say disparaging stuff about the kid and or the kid's appearance, 
you are getting banned and there and you will not have another opportunity to speak in my chat i brought this up earlier because adults are different again with me as the reminder you can be like henry you look like a bozo and i'm not gonna care but kid it's different man just so we all know we're all on the same understanding all right i want to take a look at uh, david's team again because i missed it all right shadow gligar skarmory mandibuzz lantern ice punch annihilate and icy wind obama mini coke this tournament has been unreal. There's 320 people competing. They have all the way to group P. And every game has been like, oh, good. This is a regional champion versus a regional champion. Oh, absolutely, Arison. Yeah. Honestly, I think Triple Flyer is so good right now. It's 320 people. Every game is like, oh, wow. Look at these people who are like top eight in every regional they go to. It's unbelievable. And he has Future Sight on Cresselia. Big Mandy. It is, it feels almost like Worlds, to be honest. Oh, what a good lead for David here. Shadow Gligar into the Reggie Steel. Bentuski saves switches into his own Gligar. He's just going to go for an Aerial Ace and then probably go into Mandibuzz. But that potentially sets up Fatuski Shadow Cash very well into the Lantern in the endgame. Oh boy. This could get uncomfortable. This could get uncomfortable. Uh, Rise, we saw him on stream earlier. Unfortunately, he lost 2-1, so he's in the loser side of the bracket. So he, so he is... As of so far as we know, he's still in it, but he's on the loser side of the bracket. He is awaiting. Yeah, Axon lost round one, but he has he has won a lot of games consecutively. So Axon's making a deep losers bracket run. The Aerial Ace, not gonna knock out. The Snarl doesn't knock out either. This potentially sets up a very aggressive lock on farm down, which would be uncomfortable. Yeah, Rise flew to Europe. Arrow flew to Europe. A ton of good NA players flew here. Someone was in Yo, what's up, Mark? It has been the most unbelievable tournament. It's been so good. It's been so good, man. Well, it uh, this is specifically an IC. NAIC sh should also be stacked as well because there's way more money on the line because it's an IC and way more championship points on the line. So if you're going to travel abroad, it is worth it to go to this one. As long as David doesn't I swap, you swap. He should be in a pretty okay spot here. Yeah. A debuff here would make things awkward, though. No debuff. Goes for the ace. This will be really close. I think Reggie might tank it on, like, 1 HP. Batuski shields! He wants the debuffs, man. He blasts David shields, but David's gonna have energy going into this matchup. David's gonna have energy. He has the switch here. As long as he doesn't I swap, you swap, and he doesn't. It's Shadow Cash. It's gonna take a lot of damage. This is basically Mud Bomb range already. He baits. This could come down to who wins charge stack priority in this matchup. He doubles up on Mud Bombs. Mud Bomb KOs here. Mud Bomb KOs here. If David can successfully force charge type priority and win it, it'd be big. Ah, that KOs. It does 12.5% shadow on shadow. I think that's 12.5%. I think it'll KO. It does! And that's game for Ventuski. Wow. Useful bit of information to have is how much does a mud bomb do? And he goes for the surf, but I barely think it doesn't KO. I barely think it doesn't KO. Ventuski's hit back to back here, but a surf, it'll be close. He'll be deep red, but I think Ventuski survives this. I think Ventuski survives this.
barely. Yeah, he does. It's tough because if Ventu if he goes for the ace and Ventuski doesn't CMP, then it could get awkward. Because Ventuski could overfarm. He was just trying to commit to a guaranteed win con, but didn't I couldn't quite do it. That was that was a tough one where that man. That shadow cash in the back was very scary. Um, you get a yeah, so I think it's like the top eight or something get travel paid for to worlds. And since it's in Hawaii, it's worth it. Group O is insane. Let me see who all is in group O, bro. I was looking at group C earlier. I have to go all the way down to group O. Group O has Galax Cabolton, Tomahawk, HK Assassin, Ventuski, Savage Boy, Colin. I think I already said Galax. What an unbelievably stacked bracket. Good grief. Uh, not anymore, Fickno. Oh, what a tough lead. The save switch Gligar answered with the Cresselia. Needs the flip swap. Whatever it takes, he has to flip swap. He's up two, two wing attacks. This should help him quite a bit. Oh god, Ventuski's Cresselia is so bulky. Goes for a future site. Future site shouldn't allow a farm down, but he is gonna shield it. That's a bulky as shit, Mon. He aces here, it doesn't knock out. Does Ventuski call it? Because an ace doesn't KO here. You have to dig here for it to knock out. He shields. Ooh. David's going to let it go. David can now dictate switch advantage in this game. Because he has the ability to double up on aces and take it. And there's nothing Ventuski can do to keep switch. That puts Mandy on Gly. I, I wish he would have doubled up there. Because now I think Ventusi's Glygar get, gets a farm down. Oh, he brings in Reggie? Does he catch on Gly? He doesn't catch on Gly! Dig lands. I mean, Ape takes a move. So, like, you can zap the Ape, but it's fine. This should just be pretty good for David. He makes it so he's one off the move. Is Ventuski going to get a nasty, nasty cycle reset here? I think he is. Oh, no, he, he isn't. He isn't. Like, it'll it, it'll put David at 100, but, but it won't put him over 100. Bates with an ace. Fishing for a shield. Ventuski calls it. Wow. Ventuski calls it. Good grief. Clock not yet up for Ventuski. It'll be up momentarily, though. He shields clock up for Ventuski. I think you're okay with a catch here. Oh, this is... Yeah. Yeah. It's charge attack priority, and he doesn't get there. And it KOs. And Ventuski takes it. Because Night Slash doesn't knock out here. Gligar. It's deep red, but it lives this. It lives this. Yep. And Ventuski with the 2-0 to zero is going to advance. The eye roll from David, but he'll have another opportunity in the loser's finals. We are rapidly approaching live, chat. We are rapidly approaching live.
Sendodu versus Jay the Underdog. Oh, a Giratina Origin sighting. Mandibuzz, Lantern, Polyrath, Clodzire, Skarmory, and Giratina Origin. And for Sandodu, Shadow, Polyrath, Shadow Gligar, Guzzlord, Cresselia, Lickitung, and Lantern. Well, they have to have time to get the battlers on the stage and whatnot. Winners finals of group P. The Claude trend, I think it's people trying to counter Vigoroth. I don't agree with the Claude trend, but it's been everywhere. All right. Polyrath standard, Mudshot Stone Edge. All right. Standard for Jay, for Sandodu, Moonblast, Crest, Crunch, Guzzlord. But yeah, we have almost caught up to live. Uh, I don't know, Dan. I was brought on mid-season for two regionals, and then... So I was like a mid-season bring, so I imagine I'll, I'll hopefully do more next season. Ooh, tough lead for Jay, leading the Polyrath into the Gligar. And he's ABA weak! He has the Claude in the back! Up to you, Mini. Uh, really depends what you feel most comfortable in. Shield and the Icy. But this, this should set up no matter how it happens into some really brutal RPS. Unless Polly can somehow live in Ace. Oh, tries for a Scarvery catch. Ah, this game's over. This game's over. I don't think I'll be casting worlds this year because I didn't like, there are a lot of casters who casted like a dozen regionals who, who have put in the time and have earned it, but it's definitely a goal of mine for future years. Uh, this is, yeah. Save switching Skarmory is a choice. Where's battle build to defend Claude? Claude is bad. Uh, no, I don't, I don't have any plans to compete. I just do my locals. That's it. Claude is bad and we do not respect it. <laughs> like, I don't want to tread on toes in that space. Like, this year, like, would I love to? Would I do it if they asked? Yeah, but they aren't going to ask me. Like, there's other people who have put in way more time for it. He just goes poly into poly, and yeah, that's GG. Um, was it a shiny Claude? I'd have to look. But yeah, Raiden's definitely on the wall for this one. Easy counter down. That is a shiny Claude, yes. He's your opponent this week in the Battle Frontier playoffs. Nice. Well, uh, he likes to save switch Skarmory, even when there's a possible Lantern. Yeah, casters, like, we uh, get paid for casting, and they cover our travel. So, they, they take very good care of us. Scarm into Guzzlord. Ooh, tough lead for Sandodu here. Same switch Polly though. I am shocked he's not going Lantern. Why is he not going Lantern? Sandodu could have icied there and he could have lost the whole Skarmory. In my view, that's a misplay by Sandodu. He could have put that into a range where a Dragon Claw could have KO'd just with, with an icy. Why is he staying? I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't understand why we are not just bringing in our lantern. You're getting countered down now, dude. 
There's the lantern, but he can throw one charge attack and leave. He's just gonna icy him. His clock will be up. He'll guzzle all the way down, and then he just wins on the spot. I don't, I don't understand this. One more spark, clock's up. Hello, you're debuffed and your energy's walled. I just, he's, he, yeah, he's shaking his head there. Yeah, he, uh, he uh, knows that he made, that he made a misplay there. But I mean, it's open team sheets. You know, it's not dynamic punch, so you can safely bring a lantern there. I guess he thought it was a bait out, but a bait out for what? Glygar? Yeah, guzzle all the way down. <laughs> How else would you describe what is happening to this lantern right now, bro? But realistically, what would Sandodu be trying to... Like, the lantern doesn't really have any other targets. Like, you could say Gligar, but Gligar is fine in the lantern. He just crunched a Polyrath because he thought the Skarmory was coming back in. But yeah, this is so over. Yeah, and he just goes Lant, and there's nothing he can do. There's nothing he can do. <laughs> it's completely accurate, Moose Hilarious Theory Online, yeah. Oh, fortunate for Jay. He'll have another opportunity in the Losers Finals. Let's see who is Losers Finals for his bracket. He will be playing against Caleb Peng in, in Losers Finals. Caleb has made a very, very big Losers Bracket run. <laughs> like it still would have been awkward but there was at least play there we are almost caught up to live Yo, we have David again. David versus Colin. David and versus Colin. This is losers finals. We are basically caught up to live. We are 11 minutes behind live. We started four hours late and we basically caught them. Which means... Oh, okay. Hold on. I want to take a look at the Kings first. Which means I can now make some announcements of day twos. Scafo. So, Jamie McElwain, after losing to Scafo, makes day two. Donne defeats San Judigo. Palasha made day two, defeating Adib. 23 EJB makes day two, uh, defeating Christian. Nighttime Clasher eliminated in losers finals loses to Zephy Mastic, so nighttime unfortunately falls just short of day number two. Jocks the homie makes day two. Let's go. WP Genjineer defeats Kazim to make day two. Snowman defeats nickname. Hikami makes day two after losing to Dune. Oh, wow. Tho makes a beastly loser's bracket run all the way to loser's finals, but loses to Arrow. So Arrow makes day two, but unfortunately, Tho falls just short as he loses in loser's, loser's finals. But Tho lost to Mr. McAlvin. Who we already saw make day two, and though made a beastly loses run after that, but loses to Arrow. It's probably a top 32. And I can now announce that Axon did it. After losing round one, after losing round one, 
Axon wins six best of threes in a row, defeating Arceus Aurelius to make day two. So Axon, after losing round one, has a massive loser's bracket run and does top cut at EUIC. Defeating Arceus Aurelius and his Giratina. And the Discord homie Kokshiak, who we saw earlier lose to Emmy Weedle, defeats Ash Shelto and makes it to day number two. Rip, Kurt. Yeah. All right. Let's go, David. Uh, they do, yes. So he'll be on the loser side of the bracket in day two. So, Icy Wind Obama, Night Slash Annihilate, Mandibuzz, Lantern, Skarm, Gligar. I really like the Triple Flare archetype and Colin. Another Obama Snow. Shadow Skarmory. Oh. Shadow Gligar, Lickitung, Lantern, and Annihilate. We have great lead for David leading into, okay. Leading into the Annihilate, Colin threw a counter and switch. So he actually gets outpaced here and David makes the dig. I'm expecting a shield from Colin. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. He doesn't mirror, he goes ape. And now this sets up Obama Snow to core break in the back. But here's the thing. If David shields and overforms properly, Colin's not going to be in a fun spot. So if David shields, throws five, and then shadow balls here. Oh, he does four. That, that, that's going to make it be charge attack priority. That's going to make it be charge attack priority night slash to a shadow ball. Because Colin has one and David's four off. So it'll be charge attack priority here. He baits him. Wow. He baits him. And he calls it. No shot. In comes the Obama snow. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable! Has to send in the Gligar here. Icy Wind gets shielded up. Wow! He can't double up. He throws. Colin shields. But here's the thing. David just goes ape here. Yup, he goes ape here. He snipes. And this is Surf Rage. Barring a boost, he wins. Barring a boost, he wins. Colin's only hope is a boost. And that's what he's going for, the boost con. David's like, for the love of God. For the love of God. Oh, the boost happens, but he's short. Oh! He got it! But he was just short of the Shadow Ball! Oh, God! The Wind Con almost appeared! The Wind Con almost appeared! My heart stopped when I saw that boost. Good God, man. My heart is beating out of my chest. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, calling the Night Sash was an insane play. Oh, now it's his turn to have the Gligar into the Annihilate. Save switch into the Lantern. Oh, the patience doesn't let Colin get the catch. And now he's up energy. 
The patience to not let to not let Colin catch that. That was incredible restraint there by David. The thing is, though. Ooh. Colin's Gligar energy is really, really tough for David. It's really tough for David. Can he spark it into bolt range? Looks like he can spark it into bolt range, which is good for David. But again, that energy is ever present for Colin. Energy lead ape here. This is awkward. He goes for the surf because he knows he can get it. But how do you play this out? Colin is energy everywhere. He full sends. David's thinking about it. He shields. That's a huge call. That's a huge call. Colin shields back. But this Obama Snow is still in trouble. The Gligar has stored energy. He waits the turn again. The double shield by David. David knows he's not in aerial ace range. He just needs to get rid of this Annihilate, whatever it takes. But the energy on this Shadow Gligar could be enough to propel Colin. He stays in because he has to. He tries for a catch. But he doesn't have the move. Colin should be able to do this and farm down, if I'm not mistaken. He doubles up. And that's Colin with the equalizer there. That's Colin with the equalizer right there. Very well played by Colin. Storing energy everywhere. Obama Snow claps Gligar, but not if Gligar has energy and shields are down. And he gets the equalizer there. Wow, that was beautifully played by Colin. Beautifully played. Just stored energy everywhere to make it really difficult for David. David made all the right shield calls, but Colin's energy management was perfect. We got over 600 people in here for this. I know y'all are as stressed out as I am right now. <laughs> These games have been insane. Oh my goodness. All right. Game three, David versus Colin. Annihilate into Lantern. We see the Skarmory in the back. Skarm will be very happy that it gets to avoid this Lantern. The full send by David. No baits here. Going straight for the Shadow Ball. Colin knows he can win zeros. So he's just going to let it go and, and play to the shielding scenario. He wins. Interesting. David get a shield. He can keep his Annihilate very, very healthy this way. Ooh, can't quite get there. I stand corrected. If he shielded a bolt, he, he could have farmed down, but he didn't. Now, you just go Licky here to force the energy. Because you really don't want to be Shadow Bolt on your ape, right? Oh, he actually does it. Oh, he catches, but he baited. He anticipated it. He baited. Wow. He tries for the ball catch, but he doesn't fall for it. Now it's Skarmory on the Licky. Wow. Beautiful attempt by Colin. But David baited, almost anticipating it, it feels like. That's beautiful. Ape energy could be an issue. He can still make a Night Slash on... David can make an, a Night Slash on his own Annihilate. It should have enough health that, that it can tank two counters. The awkward thing is this is not Sky Attack range. He would have to bird. And birding is just going to set up... Oh, man. It's a lot of moving parts here. He's going to bird... He'll be able to make a move, but this just gives Ape more energy. Ape has three counters for Colin. Gets the sky attack. He'll get three counters here. I 
and he can't save it. Oh no, he gets four counters. That's actually bad. Oh! The Shadow Ball catch! What an unbelievable catch by David! Unbelievable! Catching the Shadow Ball, fighting his way back into this game! What a play! What an unbelievable play! And now Colin goes from the driver's seat to in a terrible, terrible position. He no shields. It all comes down to a bait call. It all comes down to a bait call, but I think David can safely shield because he can't get there. Unbelievable plays by David. Just a sensational catch. The spark KOs. And that's day two for David. Wow. Wow. <laughs> what a game. What a game. Let's go, David, man. What a game. Unbelievable. Uh, fun fact, chat. His uh, name used to be PvP Lag, but they changed it. Uh, when he signed up for tournaments in the past, they made him change his name. So it's PvP David now instead of PvP Lag. But his old name was PvP Lag. Yeah, that catch, I have to see this replay, bro. I have to see this replay. That catch was just God tier, bro. It was just God tier, man. So many server members making day two is a big, it's a big dub. It's a big dub. We we should be caught up with with live, yes. Yeah, Colin's energy management in game two is exquisite. These battles have all felt like winners finals, basically. And this, the attempted Shadow Ball catch, but he faded, just oh, so good. So good. So good. And then this catch. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And he just has to try and. And, and, I mean, and he knows at that point he can't double up. Yeah. Just, wow. Sensational stuff. Sensational stuff. So good. Yeah, I believe we're actually caught up with live now, chat. So. Oh, we are not quite caught up with, with live. Hold on. All right. Pog you, David. Good job. We're almost caught up to live. Ooh, J vs. Caleb. There's a Bastiodon on our screen, chat. All right. The Giratina Origin Man versus the Bastiodon Man. Caleb, I'm sorry. I've got to meet you a couple times. You're a nice dude. But ethically, I have to root for the Giratina. I'm sorry. I don't make the rules. I don't make the rules. I don't make the rules, trainer. I don't make the rules. <laughs> I don't make the rules. Correct, Matt. Yeah, he he anticipated that, that that he would farm up five in the move, and that he wouldn't bait. Caleb loves Basti, and that's fair. But ethically, I have to root for the based Giratina origin. I mean, Gira does pretty well into these four. 
It just has to watch out for Dugong and of course Mandibuzz. We are three minutes away from live, so I'm just gonna let it run. I'm just gonna let it run. Ooh, Mandy into Claude. What, what's Claude's move? Okay, Claude's mud shot, but I have to imagine Claude probably wins this. Oh, Wrath has nowhere to go. He has to bait out the charge bug. He has to bait out the charge bug. If he doesn't bait out the charger, he just instantly loses. You have to bait out the bug, dude. You gotta be switching. Why are we playing ABB and not switching? Trainer, please. So you're you're gonna switch, right? You're gonna switch. Uh, you're going over 100 there. Yeah, he went over 100. I am very baffled by the lack of baiting out Charger Bug. Because you win the lead, but Charger Bug sweeps you. If Caleb shields this, this is now playable for Jay. This is now playable for Jay because he completely walls the energy with the mandibuzz. This is playable for Jay. Why, why, why would we bait here? Why would we bait here? Why would we bait here? This bait makes zero sense. But Caleb shields! The bait made no sense, but he shields. I, I, even though the bait was shielded, I still think it's a bad bait. Objectively bad bait. You have to switch out of here. Why are we aerial acing? Dark Pulse Man clicked the move. It did no damage. Why are we acing? He's, he's looking as confused as I am. Sir, you're the... Please switch. Please, why are we not throwing away the... Why are we shields down acing a, a bug electric type? Why? That was a very winnable game for Jay, but he, he just gave the game back to Caleb. He 100% just gave the game back to Caleb. Also, this is a normal Polyrath, so it doesn't KO. Like... Like... At least he's aware he made a mistake, but it's an uncharacteristic mistake for the level of play that we've seen at this tournament. We're almost caught up to live chat. Uh, they've been insanely high level. Unfortunately, we've had some interesting plays in this final match, but... It's been, it's been very high level overall. Claude into Mandy again. Uh, he's running this. If you don't, if you don't pivot, I'm filing a writ of habeas corpus. I will file a writ of a... <laughs>
Caleb just throws two to get the move off here. They are running mirror teams, yes. And here he could have overfarmed more, but didn't. I think Caleb's gonna play it. He's going for an undercharge, but it'll still knock out. The only thing I think Caleb's gonna do differently is not shield the earthquake and then auto win the game on the spot because Jay doesn't know how to pivot. He shields again, a bit of a surprise. Will he use, yeah, that's the important question. Will he use pulse? But like, why? You're running ABB. You're running ABB, man. Why are we not pivoting? Ooh, a rare mistake from Caleb giving a snarl for free. So we're we're gonna dark pulse, right? But oh, cause Caleb cycle reset him, that's why. So he can get it back. Okay, he's dark pulsing. He's dark pulsing. So now we switch. We throw away the polyrath as fast as we can. I repeat, we throw away the polyrath as fast as we can. Yo, congrats, Danny's good stuff. Uh, where am I sitting at right now? We throw away the Polyrath as fast as we can. We just throw it away. We, at any day now, we throw away this Polyrath. If this doesn't knock out, aggro switch poly sniper. Snipe, switch, switch! Why are you not switching? I don't, I don't, I don't get it, man. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it, man. I'm confused. I don't get it. I don't get it, man. Well, on the bright side, that series is now over. I am molding because it was so winnable, but he refused to keep alignment. He had a Amanda Buzz that walled all of the energy and he just let the energy be useful. For no reason. Well, Caleb made day two, so that's another American to day two. All right, unfortunately we are back caught up to live, so. I guess do I just play games or something? Like, oh man. I don't even know if people are going to be queuing at this point, man. I don't even know if people are going to be queuing. I'm, I'm like 2900s though, man. Doing sets on stream stresses me out that uh, I'm going to get sniped, to be honest. Like, I can do it, but... Any update on Rise? Uh, let me look. Rise... Unfortunately, Rise lost to Kazim, so Rise unfortunately did not make day two. The hell? Why is it behaving like that? I've done no sets today. Uh, surely, surely we're gonna hit legend. Copium. Copium OD. Legend any moment now.
I win ones here. I win ones here, so I just go straight slam. Shadow cash. Two. So he should have a move now. So he he's at three. He's on four. Ooh, this is. This is awkward. I'm gonna do this. Yep, that was the right play to do. He messed up by not throwing first. Seven. This is still losable though. This is still losable. Ten. It's not GG's man. I lose this charge type priority tie, so I just go for the extra. Yeah, now it's over. GG's. If I see him P-tat him there, oh, I lose. All right. Oh, we got a game. Alan and Aiden. I play them a lot. Mantine, not a great lead for me, but I mean, my backline wants to see it way less, so this is fine. All right, eight. Landing one would be nice. Terrific. Terrific. They're on back-to-back -back aces here. They pulse, so they should be two off at ace. Ooh, nice catch. So they saved up uh, a move for later. It's a very nice catch. Five, six, seven. Okay. <laughs> nice, you know, though. Five. No, this is for open greatly. I guess it's also jungle cup eligible, though. Do I win that charge attack priority tie? Is Mantine either that or I denied them? We'll see. Oh, I deny them. That's unfortunate for them. They throw.
They've had two really strong cash answers. I have to hope they're weak in the back. Okay, their own. Five. It looks like all battles are are done for for the day. Uh, eight, nine. I'm shadow. Oh, that's actually bad. I think I threw this game by not going for a scald. I thought it would do more. I think I've lost this now. I have lost this. Oh, okay, never mind. I was I was on my four cycle. I was on my four cycle. I'm good. I was on my four cycle. I'm good. I was on my four cycle. I thought I was on my five cycle, but I was on my four cycle. Holy God. That was stressful. Oh, I don't play enough whisk cash for this shit, man. I don't play enough whisk cash for this shit. the EUIC battles. I'm pretty sure EUIC just ended. <laughs> Alright, we got a game. Sableye, okay. This is... I actually don't know this matchup. It's probably not bad for me. It'd be dope if they returned me. They won't, though. Because double foul play is the way to go. Okay. Uh, if you're in queuing vicinity, I would just... Um... I'm really happy I've switched. CMP on eight. They should stone edge here. Stone edge is seven six. Well, I've got through one and a half Pokemon here. This will be the stone edge. Eight. Sludge bomb. That's straight six. So they're on two, three. Four, five. Seven. I live in Ice Beam. This is like not a traded Tropius. It was from whenever they had it spawning for some GoFest. So it's actually a decent ranked Tropius. So it should live in Ice Beam. I'm not I'm not stressed about it getting bubbled down. Yeah, we live that pretty comfortably. We live that pretty comfortably. Nah, I 29.99 and then tanked, and I had to fight my way back.
I just need to air slash this into a range where... I just wanted something that could answer a Whiskash safe switch, to be 100% transparent. I wanted something that could answer Whiskash and Ape safe switches. Yo, what's up, Mob? Welcome in, man. Oh, we got a game. Gator, good lead, good lead. I actually think I probably lose zeros, but I probably win ones. That's bad. That's super bad. That's atrociously bad. No shield this for the boys. Okay. Oh, the air slash for free? The air slash for free? That's crazy. That's crazy. Bye. Two. Ooh, this will be a tough game. I would love to be able to leave. If I can exit out of this matchup, that'd be huge. I can't yet. like my odds here chat this is not going well a drill run here a shield though No. Surely it's him lagging out and not me. It's him lagging out because he knew it was over. 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 Legend on stream. I haven't done that in ages, man. Let's fucking go. 402976. Wrap it up, baby. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> oh my god, we did it. After I got 2999. Oh my god. He shouldn't have shielded his fucking A slash. Why the hell did he sweep his uh sh shield his A slash? Let's go! Now I can go to my actual GBL thing. And resize shit. Okay. Oh, it's against Chrome? Yo, that's a wicked down pair for me. Hold on. That's a wicked down pair for me. That's 140 down pair. Yeah, uh, uh, yo, what's up, Gabriel? Yo, GG's, man. We have played a couple times, I think. I got 29.99, Gabriel. I got 29.99. 
This is a 140 point down pair. I might actually have to win this. I might actually have to win this, which is scary. I I should still have it. I should still have it. Because the, the other four were about at my ELO. I should still have it. But it's very rough. Gudra? Yo, what's up, Ken? With the five up. Appreciate you, homie. Gudra is pretty bulky. I think it can actually survive this this mud bomb. But yeah, thank you, Ken, for the five bomb. I appreciate you, homie. That was very kind of you, man. He's only getting one, so I shield. He'll have a second good cash answer in the back. Alt would make sense. Dragonite would make sense. Guzzlord makes sense. One. Okay. He shields. That's good for me. Legend on stream. He is him. Oh, we're so back. We're so back. We're so back, man. If I live these next two as well. I just do this because I preserve the ability to make a mud bomb later. I I preserve the ability to make a mud bomb later. And then I just go Tropius. Yeah. Hopefully, I miscounted. Fuck. I miscounted chat. Well, hopefully that doesn't cuck me out of legend. Because it was a 100 and 120 point down pair. It shouldn't, though. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. It shouldn't cuck me out of legend. 120 point down pair is rough, but I, I'll, I'll get like plus 30. I'll get like plus 30. Yeah, this uh, should still be good. Because the rest were about at my ELO. 30-21, baby! Let's go! Yo, Chrome, I was 4-0 that set, and that was a huge-ass down pair. I did still get Legend. We're good. Woo! <laughs> Let's go, baby! On stream two! Oh man, I'm I miscounted your lantern, man. I miscounted your lantern. Oh, I get to do the pose now. I get to do the pose now, man. Poses? Yes, sir. Kamehame! Oh! You're 29th. Oh, Chrome, I read that as 2835. Chrome. I misread that shit. I thought it was 2835, and I thought that that down pair might, like, cuck me out of my 4-0, giving me 24 points. But you're 2935. Okay. In that case, then, I'm happy I threw. I just can't read, apparently. I thought they said 2835, and I was like, is this down pair gonna cuck me? Oh, let's go, dude! Oh, what a day. What a day! Well, now I have a tomorrow video to make. Hey, chat, do y'all want? I have. Yeah. On stream, too? Let's go. Let's go. Tropius was too wicked. Shh. Tropius was too wicked. All right, chat. League change happens in like an hour and a half. So. 
I'm gonna post a video on a team that fucks in uh, Spring Cup. Alright, new video live down there. Go check it out. It, it features a Spring Cup team with Shadow Quagsire and Ufisk. It is a no Vigoroth team. I will make a video on the Legend Push, yes, but yeah. If you're wanting Spring Cup idea, I got you. Check down there. New video. Please go check it out. Show us some love. Thank you all for tuning in today. I had a lot of fun today. Hope y'all did as well. We did it, baby. Fucking legend. Let's go. All right. Peace out, y'all, and uh, enjoy the video. Sorry, in uh, Jungle Cup. Yeah, in Jungle Cup. Not Spring Cup. Jungle Cup. Yeah, Jungle Cup. Sorry, Jungle Cup. Yeah. It is Jungle Cup, and it's Shadow Quagsire Domination. I got so hyped, I forgot what the cup was called. But alright, uh, go check out the video. Link's right there. Bye!